Buonasera a tutti. Good evening, and we are already one camera down, which is fantastic, right? Oh, no, uh, you broke That's okay, that's all right. I broke it with my face. Which one? <laughs> which one? Um, you did. Why did one. you do it? Oh, I hate myself. Oh, God. No, not you. Um, Sheldon broke it. Did he? Yeah. How did he, how did he do that? He smiled too much. Smiled too much. That will do it. Is Sorry, guys. That was. It's a storm. Is that it that was, was a storm. Yes. We did have a storm already. Um, I was doing finger guns and everything. I was like, Ew. and <laughs> so now no one will ever see yeah, it. We missed out on that. Hey, we do we want to read here ourselves? Hey. Oh no, turn it down. We're still live. What are you doing? We are still live. Hey, everybody. I'm doing what I do every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turn my sound down. <laughs> Won't be a moment while I. Um, <laughs> Uh, Someone, I'll, I'll, just, um, I'll let um, the, uh, Preston and Ben entertain you for a moment. While... NBCDM commented, oh, look, a bunch of them ended up in the astral plane. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Just be a second. Thing. Whoa, that was cute. Hey, we have go, go sit in the technical DMC. difficulties. I don't think I'm worthy. I can't sit in the DMC. Do it. That's like Your sitting in the Queen's intro overlay. <laughs> just watch. It's normally just a Oh, NBCDM! He's subscribed again. Oh, hey, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Guys. Thank you. Um, apparently it's your time press and you should start juggling. Oh, juggle, juggle, juggle. Don't do that on that table. Pretty you good. will crack someone's um, tablet device. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Well, um, while I get this sorted out, does anyone have any shout outs that they would like to do? I can't, can't do it from here. Can't do it from here. I need a camera. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. ah. Can I shout out uh, technical difficulties? I'd like to thank the storm. Oh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, Melbourne Storm, big fans. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, how's everyone's week? How are you doing? Hey, while, while we're trying to entertain well, well. you, um, what rewards would you like to see for our little bits that you guys earn? Oh, um, I, have a, I have a recommendation. I that that would be really funny. Reco like, recommend them in the comments, and then we we'll might put them in. Go on, Preston. Go on, let's see it. <laughs> Do you want me to shout out? No, no, no. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mikhail stream. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I'm only Mikhail A stream. Hear that, Mikhail is so popular. What happened? I wasn't even Preston either. Um, so oh. X Calamity suggested that for a, like, a, a thing, um, Woo! like a, Woo! a bit, um, you could have like a Michele only stream. Aeoncraft, thank you so much for subscribing. Hey, oh, Aeon, thank, thank you. Thank oh, you it's so me, much. I'm floating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is the, is the no, dimensions right? Nope. <laughs> I'm just sorting out the. Whoa, <laughs> sorting out the. <laughs> oh, the here. Jordan's face is so big. Hey, thank you. So large. Oh, we love that. Oh, welcome yeah. to oh, so you want to be a streamer. Face. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got like it's zoomed no right up in. <laughs> well, look, um, this is just part of the amazing. Uh, <laughs> it's frozen. Oh no, he's so big. Jordan. Big time. Big Thank boy. you in the comments. Mm. Look, yeah, look, oh, this is just Jordan. <laughs> it always big is tiny. an amazing time when uh, we can we can come together. Oh my god, people can see the entire fucking table. That's not a thing they've ever been able to see before. No, it's very Welcome true. To the oh, table. look at all those oh, secrets. Oh, yeah. the table. Hey, there it is. Now it's hidden. Look, look at all the things no, you can still see your dice box. The time, <laughs> Why are we we're, we're infiltrating your box right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Um, what are you doing? What's my box? It's crazy. Send them to the back. Oh. Wow, this is going so well. It's amazing. We, this we, is cute. We, we I love like this. Do you like it how the audio and visual is always spot on in the testing? Yeah, oh, yeah what's yeah. with that? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Like, yeah. It's always perfect. But effect all. Just so you know, yeah, before we actually present ourselves as stream. Oh, hold on, the, the other camera's gone. Yeah, what happened? Froze. Oh, I'm trying to fix that too. They saw Preston's face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's the cameras, bro. I think that okay. Never mind. Fuck me. Am I right, bro? Yes. No. Don't Jordan's do that. amazing do that. hair is getting cut off. <laughs> um, a little bit. A little bit. Um, I can make it ever, ever a little bit more. I don't know why you can see so much of the table. I'm back. I'm back to normal. Yeah. Back to normal. Yeah. Moving. But these guys are not. We're not moving? No, they're moving. We're not moving. But like, so, but like yeah, look at the... Have a look, have a look like, here. Just realised I didn't change it. Oh, it's just behind time. <laughs> yes, yeah, correct. Cool. Sure. 
Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. Um, I just realized I'm wearing the same shirt as last week. Amazing. Still, I'll good. change at the price. We're Still. back, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, welcome. We are. Um, there is a request uh, just before I start. Shout out wise, that um, that we do better. Uh, I do better with setting up before we we start streaming. No one said that. You I, just, I you just that. gave yourself that feedback. <laughs> Um, so thank you so much for your patience while we uh, redo this. Next calamity is shading me now for wearing the same shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go it's, change. It smells oh, like no. oh, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now that we're back and uh, like like always, uh, feedback about the audio. Thank you. Um, I'll start by uh, just yeah, apologies for the for this for the setup, but. Um, no, I just completely forgot what my shout-out was going to be. Uh, thank, thank you so you much for the subs. subs. Thank you, Aeon Carbs and MCDM. That, that's amazing. Mm. Uh, so I might as well start there. Who else has a shout-out that they'd like to do? Oh, pick me. Dad, pick me. Sure. Um, <laughs> um, I told you, Dad. That was weird, wasn't it? <laughs> Go. Let's start the stream again. Okay, <laughs> um, sure. No, yeah. I'm joking. Um, I've shouted this person out for the last couple of weeks, um, but... Um, shout out to Banshee Workshop. Um, I got my dice in the mail um, that I talked about last week, and oh my god, they're so stunning. I'm calling them my Amara dice, even though the official name is Construct, purely because they are like transparent, but they're like shadowy, and then they're lighter in other places, and there's glitter. Um, so they're my Amara dice now, and I get this cute little D4 as well. That's cool. It's like a little gem shape. Um, so super stoked. Um, also want to shout out two other really cool dice creators that are sitting on the table in front of me. The first one is Mithril Dice, um, who I bought this one off a while ago and I'm waiting to receive a chunky D20 from in the mail as well. And of course, Aeoncraft, um, who I watched pour and demold um, other dice the other day, um, and who actually does commissions, just so everyone knows. Um, Aeoncraft will commission dice. Um, so you can check him out in our comments <laughs> um, <laughs> if you'd like to see his streams. But thank you for the dice. I'm super stoked. Ben, do you want to show your Banshee dice? Yes, box? I was very lucky to be gifted these um, from Samara or Emily. And um, they're absolutely gorgeous. They're actually Banshees as well. Because um, they were a gift, I actually never knew the name of this one. Knew the name. Um, I don't remember off the top of But they're fantastic, uh, nevertheless. Um, and I was a total dork this morning and kept rolling them. It's and good. A whole bunch of For the last three right, days. Right. We'll never get that back. back. Yeah. For the last three days, he's been like walking around going, I want to use my dice. I want to use my dice. <laughs> Well, we'll see if those D20s, uh, well, those 20s are now all run out. And yeah. how many ones I'll roll tonight. <laughs> yep, we shall see. Uh, we welcome back and uh, very happy to have Mr. Jordan, a.k.a. Drago, which Ooh, I'm now going to be using like a cool name. in a uh, Spanish <laughs> accent forever. Mr. Drago. Um, so, yeah, well, fat, fat Tony accent. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, yeah. hey, that's good. What was his name? Round Terry. Terry. Round Terry. Round Terry. <laughs> what do I call Fat Tony? <laughs> Terry is my dad's name. Fat Tony's from The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, we, we can't copyright here. Um, cool. Thank, Thank you very much for the shout out of Dice. Guess what, everybody? It's stormed again. So we are in a in a beautiful environment. Um, and I think it's I think it's all gone now. But if you do see lightning, um, it's very frightening. Uh, so, uh, uh, any other speaking shout of outs? copywriting, <laughs> that's true. I think we have to shout someone out um, who we shout out every week, who Please. is our favourites, um, who is actually the shout out that you would make. So I'll throw it back to you. Go for it. Oh. <laughs> I, I hope this is the correct one, but as always, um, everybody who is anybody should check out uh, our amazing friends, Meeples and Dragons. Um, please visit their uh, their Twitter and also their online store, where you can get amazing things like shirts. Um, we gave away glasses. We gave away a glass um, a couple of weeks ago um, on our Twitter. Um, that's going to be happening again in some moments in time perhaps not tonight but soon um so so check it out uh with another uh, uh etching uh that is coming out as well now um in that with that said they've been really really kind to us so um yeah please check them out and uh and buy their amazing merch awesome all right 
Well, I'm going to get into it because um, technical difficulties. What are you getting into? That. Uh, getting into um, this meal I have right here. Uh, I'm just going to what? check. No, nothing. I'm just going to check my. <laughs> Eat the whole steak on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> just going to see me eat a steak. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's recap, everybody. Whoa. So. Whoa. Um. Recapping session 52. You made it home to Pylos Tower, your hard won mansion of comfort after the tense event of the Maraw Halls. And you came home to a familiar face in Regav's cell greeting you, and a not so familiar face, a war forged by the name of Dravago seeking an audience with you and seeking your help to locate the Lord of Blades, this advanced forged being waiting out in the light rain for comfort while you all slept. A well-deserved sleep after the evening meal prepared by Mixade, your maitre d'. You awoke to music and saw in wonder a passing troop, a circus on their travels to Shan, and they invited you to revel in the wonder that they shared uh, as they shared their performing their stalls and their foods for you and with you you noticed however a young silver dragon trapped in one of the animal cages that they were using as entertainment it not going unnoticed by gunner who threatened the changeling ringleader or revu to let him go you bargained with him and he had released it into your care and the circus left a disappointed Thorum watching uh, an enactment of the five destroying a Rakshasa in the Oaks restaurant. And as the dragon told you of its plight, being plucked from its home as it was born on the majestic carved stone home of dragons of the Lazar principalities in the middle of the ocean, it closed its eyes to reveal a hidden scene before you. Ghosts blue, familiar, all around you. So, you have simply stopped and are taken by surprise, in shock, by the hundred or so ghosts, ghostly images that have taken form and have appeared around you, stopped looking towards you. Neutral faced of many races and ages, you're seeing them almost as though they were flesh, but only slightly see-through. The young dragon, who's named Krivereth, continues as he speaks. He says, I have revealed them to you with their request, with their demand. They are always here, always around you, never leaving, and they are trapped. They live a moment in time before your time trapped in their own timeline and screaming for help. No one listening. Two realities. The explosion. The calamity of Sire. The many who died there never died never left, stayed, 
living. The calamity sending them to a moment before. All there, the land ravaged by war but untouched by magical desecration that you see before you, that you have seen and heard about all of these years. A schism bursting slowly apart, they fight still in a never-ending loop. And they die and they return. dragons lived those years ago and were not sleepy but were fighting their own battles and they became trapped in the moment the calamity occurred they were trapped in sleep in slumber the very second of the magical explosion that destroyed Sire, turning it into Mornland. This beautiful light silvery beast stretches its wings, although as though it is, he is completely metallic and the sun now coming through the clouds revealing a brighter day ahead this morning after a light rain overnight and a cloudy greet just shining on these on this on these scales and showing a a beautiful creature in front of you he continues he says have you ever seen things, things that were there then were not, as though a memory, things that appear and disappear like these peoples? If you ever have, then you have seen the past what still lives and what is desperate to be brought back to one reality again. This magical explosion is the cause. The many that survived this believe that the armies of Sire, the citizens of Sire, were destroyed. But they are here, all around you, waiting. How are these, we can see them, the citizens, how are they responding as the dragon speaks? As you see this dragon speak, they appear focused on you all, focused on this tiny, only just born silver dragon, <clears throat> looking towards it and you, some of them with a sudden burst of emotion, overwhelming tears coming into their eyes as though upset and overwhelmed with happiness. Others simply appearing neutral, but still not leaving your gaze. Looking to each one of you individually. I must question one so young that knows so much. 
you are wise to question the knowledge. And how have you possessed this knowledge? For how many years have you been on this plane? I am an infant in terms of the age of dragons, in mere months old. I only possess this knowledge as a last piece from a, a power greater than I. And you were saying that the rest of your kind are trapped by the same force that traps the citizens of Sire. Correct, great trap. You know this being well. I doubt. <laughs> you have encountered it, but not battled it before. But seen its might. Seen its potential. The last gift that the great dragons, my kin, bestowed on Corvair before they were put to slumber as a sacrifice like the Coatles of old was to trap Fraser Blue in the other reality but even now it can reach through through its servants and is causing havoc here. Can I... As I've been listening to this, like, does this dragon sound legit? Or honest? Yeah, make an insight check. As you overhear the familiar sound of a... Of, of a um, what is that? never-ending yowling of a dog in the far distance. <laughs> Should we close the doors? Yeah. I mean, if it's not too hot, but that's okay. If, if you'd prefer to leave it open, that's alright as well. That's <laughs> really the ambiance. <laughs> 3D sound. What did you get for yeah. your inside? It was really good. Yeah? Yeah, it was a 9. A 9? Yeah. This draconic creature, thank you, Thora, is simply stating fact but there is an in, there is a, a level of hope in its voice of determination of trust okay um I would like to turn to someone just told us to bring the dog on the show <laughs> um, also I'd like to say that X calamity is um is blaming you and saying that you're framing her for the explosion in Sire. Because <laughs> her name's X Calamity. Um, <laughs> I swear it's not true. Um, yeah. I'm just doing that a little bit if that's okay. Um, Amazing. I'd like to turn to the nearest ghost mm. and just see if I can and it's physically there or whether it's like something I put my hand through. Sure. As you turn you see this strong regal looking elf that you recognize as a as, as a race from Valina, a wild elf as they like to be called the lords of horses as they are um, commonly known and with his proud look this long um, exquisite looking golden features and this long beard you place your hand on these broad shoulders and it's as though your hand is moving through liquid i'm through gonna literally water. go Ugh. it's warm to the touch as though you're almost touching what what blood would feel like no 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 as you quickly move your hand away and then the shimmer of the shoulder coalesces back to being normal from the smokiness. After I kind of go, Ugh, I'm going to look at the elf and say, sorry. 
He simply looks at you in a, in a proud way, but doesn't show any other emotion. But the same as what you first noticed. Mm. Seems to me if you're a dragon and have the power to reveal these beings to us, normally unseen, that perhaps dragons were involved in the calamity to begin with. Do you know any of the uh, information on this? You are speaking to perhaps other dragons that are in your reality, in your time. Thorum sneezes and <laughs> ah. He continues to look at you and he says Do you it's mean the dragons thing. that are here now? The ones that were around when the calamity happened. Seems if you have the power to reveal these beings to us, that's maybe a similar power was involved in removing them from this reality. Are you accusing the dragons of doing this to the peoples? Not all dragons. I've heard some are good, some not so good. You are speaking of Tiamat then? That is one that I have heard of. This creature closes his eyes and opens them again. I speak through Bahamut with his voice. When I say that Tiamat is not involved in this, even now the armies of the metallic that stride forth to release her know not what they are what they are traveling to. Aren't we supposed to be stopping them, by the way? Yes. <laughs> there are many forces we are meant to be stopping at present. Not across the land. It is overwhelming, but perhaps this information that I will tell will simplify matters somewhat. I hope that you are aware of this army that travels westward to seek out and release the dragon unto your world. But know this, Fraser Blue reaches through and touches those that are weak-willed, innocent, Tiamat cannot be released. They worship a being that is veiled in illusion. It is in fact the demon of illusion himself that coerces the war forged that takes them on this journey falsely they believe they are fighting for the dragon queen but in fact unbeknownst to even them this army is working under the influence of Frazor Blue Tiamat is well guarded. She shall not be released into the world. My God will see to this. And when they make contact with who they believe is her, it is in fact him that they shall be speaking to in disguise. Frieza was wrong. I mean, he was wrong anyway. But I don't like talking about him. I'll do it then. We need to understand our enemy, though, Amara. So 
said my name funny. Amara. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a speech impediment, so <laughs> sue me. <laughs> what do you mean he was wrong? He was under the belief that he was working with Tiamat. Do you think he was also deceived like the Warforge, or that he was simply lying to us and had as much information as our dragon here? Yeah. I don't think we can know unless he's alive, and uh, I would prefer him not to be. Yes. Well, we've, that, se- we've seen to that. That's why. I... Never mind. There are servants in your midst that work with him. Trust is hard to come by. What was with the circus, by the way? That was weird. That was like all this stuff that was really ambiguous and like, just lay out the cards on the table. What was going on? Is it still in the cage? Yes. Maybe we, we should get him out of the cage before we continue to interrogate him. I don't think it's interrogating, I'm just asking I, I, I was just a poor choice of words. But, oh. you know, before we keep asking questions, maybe we could help... Thor and Mjolstrom. ...if they to become more comfortable. Uh, so I'll walk up, I look at our new forged friend, I go, I may not be the strongest... I may not only be the strongest one here. I think you're the strongest one here. Later, <laughs> not, very, um, not very strong. <laughs> not very strong? Oh. Yes. I don't believe him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, is the, ca- the, is the cage side. openable? Is it locked? Does it have a latch on it? There That's seem- where I start, like, smashing yeah. it to bits. There seems to be no door, no little hinges. Nothing to suggest that this creature was put in there mundanely. I can't do it. Do you know how to open this cage? There is an anti-magic field surrounding it. Only brute force can help. There you go. That is why I could not be released by you. I'm going to slap Thorum on the arm. And to do that, I need to reach up quite high. Um, so I like reach up and go. And then I say, it's your time to shine, buddy. Um, Only perhaps force can... physical force. Do so you understand if the barrier is specific to the cage or the insides of it as well? Simply surrounding it. Magic not being able to enter or leave. I walk up to Thorne before he acts. Forgive me for my suspicions, but you've still not quite answered my question yet. How do you con upon this information? And for such a powerful dragon, how are you in a cage? The knowledge that I have received would be similar to knowledge and power that perhaps you, mighty ranger, may have received from a deity or from a power beyond you. I was gifted information by Bahamut god of the dragons, a god of the dragons, of gold, silver, and bronze, and copper. Through them, through him, I can become a messenger for you. I'm gonna get my cloak take it off. I'm going to take off my water skin and soak it in water and then turn to the guys and then this is something I learned in prison. You can't just smash your way through the bars, but You were in prison? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to wrap the cloak around the bars and then throw the handle of my mace through the cloak and use it to twist and try and generate a bit of force. I'm going to... With that creativity do so at advantage. See? <laughs> What's the purpose of the wedding? Of wetting it? Wet bars, wet, uh, wet cloth bends bars. Yeah, dry cloth. Why? 
Dry cloth breaks it. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, that is a 21. A 21, okay. And with this heaving and of your muscles and, and your, you are using all of your strength, you slowly see a gap opening between two of the bars and they, they stretch further and further and swiftly this dragon almost swoops out and then lands simply on top of the cage and you can see now the wings unfurling fully about two meters um, long from its body one meter each side this is not a small dragon and the reflection from its scales almost blinds you as it's almost white silver I'm gonna yell out to it go on breathe some fire <laughs> As it, as it stretches, it turns to you and you have this almost instant feeling of, of gratitude as this spout of flame, enormous for its size, just gets, just gets exploded from its mouth into the air and disappears in a moment. I'm going to turn to Amara and say, it makes me feel inadequate. <laughs> I mean, I can't change that. <laughs> how you feel is how you feel. Fair. Um, cool. I'm glad we discussed this. <laughs> you will never be that good. <laughs> maybe, I'll laugh. I'll laugh. maybe if I uh, keep saying stuff like that to you, you'll feel so sad that you'll become that great one day. I look up at the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dragon born though. You're different. It's true. That's an actual dragon. You're just like half of one. You call me a dragon. <laughs> Sorry, Thorum. If it makes you feel any better, I'm like half a human. Because <laughs> the other half is Sonari. Hmm. Still no fire breathing. No, but I can disappear now. I'll show you later when it's dark. Okay, noted. Noted. <laughs> Do you believe me, Ranger? <clears throat> You speak of illusions, and forgive me that I have only just met you, but how do we know that you are not just another convenient ploy to distract us on our path to the deep waste? Name your test, and I shall truthfully and with all of my power that I have, <coughs> do my best to prove myself. I do not mean to distract you from your goals. I mean to spurn you forward so you know what you are entering. What do you know of the Lord of Blades? Hamut did not share too much of him, only that he and his army are fumbling towards something they are not prepared for. Could be singling the end of Warforged of our time. As the, as the armies travel further in, they are fed lies, dishonest words from the Lord of Blades, but through its mouth, it thinks that Tiamat will reward him. There is only one being in Corvair that he truly relies on. One servant of his that is behind <clears throat> the many things that have occurred to 
guide you off track, to misinform, to prepare for your end. Name your test, Ranger. You're still speaking in your idols. End your sentence and make it plain to us whom it may be. I need to make a roll for him. Hey! that there in, in case you wanted to check. It's in that one, isn't it? It's a three. <laughs> <laughs> I think you left it out in that one. <laughs> as much as I would like to speak plainly, Ranger, there is something that is stopping me speaking its name. Speak its name, no. Something prevents me. Is it someone that is close to us? Someone you know. Before you get to that climax. Please. Um, I just was <laughs> sent this wonderful um photo. <laughs> From someone we know. Oh, yeah. um, it is us in their lounge room. Oh. Um, um, and this is the guy that designed our logo. It's <laughs> Elliot Esdale. Hey. 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 Um, Hello, thanks for not only watching, but watching on a TV <laughs> where you can see us. Really? really yeah. All of our amazing, ugly, my ugly features. I think. Shut up, Michaela. <laughs> Thanks so much, Vic, um, for Tell us whose face you would like to be closest, and yeah. uh, I'll make that happen. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, climax now. <laughs> You're about to tell us who it is. <laughs> there is. I am simply not strong enough to overcome their magic. What race is it? I am silenced by them. I can start like reeling through and you can say yes or no. If you'd like. Uh, are, they in the, <laughs> are, they, are they in the estate? Do they have a hat? <laughs> so they have a, are they here? You can see you can see that this this young silver dragon is struggling. Make me an arcana check. After I see him struggling that with the question that gun has mentioned. Um, 18. There are, there are magical barriers, coercion, <laughs> um, coercions, uh, spells that do prevent beings from speaking from understanding, from um, their enchantment based. And you, you figure that there is something keeping this creature from, uh, from revealing this, uh, from revealing information. There is something blocking its thought, but you're not sure as to what, what kind of magic that could be more, more so. I'll um, reach forward and cast um, Detect Thoughts again. Thorm, okay. Thorum sneezes again. Shoot. <laughs> and I will, I will also Thanks, buddy. gently touch the top of its head and I'll just say, It's okay, you can, you can trust me. 
are they here? And I will gently push my mind forward into his. Okay. You immediately feel uncertainty, fear. And you watch as you enter, as you enter the mind of this creature, you're almost overwhelmed by the initial knowledge and wisdom and intelligence that a dragon of this age of, um, has. And however, you immediately are met with a stone wall and you put you you mentally push it out of the way and you can see visually that this stone wall slides with a grinding sound away from you to the right but then coming towards you more there's another uncertain and uh, uncertain feeling and a fear as another wall becomes gets closer and closer and start and you again move it away but as you do it yet another one stands in your path and those those initial thoughts are the only things you can understand um i'll i'll just say i'm sorry and i'll push deeper okay I'll probe deeper okay um it needs to make a saving throw <laughs> It can let me in if it wants to, or at least try to let me in. Sure. Uh, It did roll a natural four, though. (laughs) Good luck. (laughs) So, could you describe again what the what the secondary (laughs) does for me? You gain insight. Insight. You gain insight into its reasoning. I don't know why I (laughs) spoke. You gain insight into its reasoning, its emotional state. Something that looms large in its mind, such as something it's worried about, it loves, it hates. Um, either way, the target knows you're probing its mind. Cool. And that continues for as l- up to a minute. Okay. So I can continue to feel and look around for as long as that spell is active and anyone's mm. questioning it. So it mm. can kind of Shift. be influenced by the questions we ask it. Sure. By now, I would assume you would have described that spell to others, so you know that this is happening. You know, like, you know that that can be influenced. While that's happening, then oh, sorry. After the last question he asked, um, I pull into the rucksack from the back and present a cup, and I say to him, "This is King Boronel's personal possession." Three sessions. <laughs> but Caleb looks like he's gonna cry. You may if you want. <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know, it's taken fifty-three sessions for Ben to know how to say That's King good. Boronel. <laughs> um, that is going on TikTok later. I was clapping because you had components ready. <laughs> <laughs> go, go all here. Ah. <laughs> uh, would the one you speak of be the owner of this? Well, As you present it, Gunnar, you see that there is an image initially of a great castle that you are familiar with, that you've seen before in Shan, the very center that houses King Boronel, but you have this thought of uncertainty and dismissiveness as the, like a watercolor painting, it gets washed away, that image, and it becomes non-existent. And another stone wall comes into the fray. And then you see, or you feel first a fear and then a forest clearing and nothing else at the moment. Does the, dra- does the dragon speak or is it able to. It's not able to speak while. Well. It is? Oh, yeah. Does it reply does it back to me? No. No, it, it simply looks at, the, at, at this goblet at the moment. Can 
to make like a perception check to see if it's in afraid inside or yeah inside. Go for it. This magic, it's so powerful that even when you were inside that cage, you dampened your own magic, you could not defy it. And then it does speak, it says, My magic is in its beginnings of learning. I do not have much to prevent an invasion of my mind. It's good, I don't know if it's good enough. 15? 15, okay. There was, for an instant moment, recognition, but then a closing of the eyes, and you you gauge that it is that this object that you've put in front of it is of no import. I take it back away. Another moment passes, Gunner, and striding forward outside one of um, uh, one of the edges of the forest is Fariso and he strides forward and from the other side of the clearing you see the Lord of Blades stepping forward as well and you remember this as a as a, as a, as a memory that you've seen before and Farisa himself admitting to meeting the Lord of Blades as you see them come together again and from afar you can't make out what they're saying but you know you know the gist of what they speak of as they converse side by side but even then there is another thought in your mind doubt so much doubt at this image is it my doubt no it's it's And as you watch, you see Fariso specifically start to shimmer. Something you weren't too privy to and shimmer again. And he's back to being Fariso. And you can hear almost a, a roar from this young dragon of defiance as it's, as it's trying to do something. Is this really Farisa? A push and a stone wall appears in front, but before you can move it aside, you see or feel the presence of this young dragon. Move it. No. It is not. And then fear once again. You've still not told us yet how you've ended up here in this cage. He speaks, but it's weaker, as though as though he is concentrating on something else greatly. this changeling took me months ago as I as I was born from the clutches of my parents in the Tsar principalities they came by ship and they stole me away I convinced them to pass by here after hearing that the five might be able to help. And I coerced Orevu to travel this way. How fast can you make ground across Norway? 
came from Thrain. It does not take much. It can be maybe a month, month and a half, by means of their travel. There is some kind of psychic block. Um, I don't know if I have the abilities to remove them, but I can feel it. I can see it. The only thing I can think of is may, maybe If this magic is powerful enough to move past the spell on this cage, which I is not powerful enough to impact, and you are not powerful enough to impact, I doubt there's much we can do. I mean, I can end curses and diseases and things of that nature. Is what do you think this is? I turn to the dragon. What is this that afflicts you? Illusion. Powerful illusion and enchantment. It is not curse nor disease. It is an attack. I would say it's, it's an enchantment, mostly. Um, that would be the... Maybe Regaf can help. school of magic, but it's... Psionics is, is its source. Dravaga? I'm going to turn to it and say, I'm going to, with your permission, try and use the spell. But I have very little doubt that it will work. But we're safe and close to rest, so there's no harm in trying. Although the cost will be great. Um, so I'm going to pull out a hundred of the gold dust that I bought from Sean. And I'm going to cast Greater Restoration at fifth level. So you imbue a creature you touch with positive energy to undo a debilitating effect. To reduce the target's exhaustion level by one or end one of the following effects on the target. One effect that charmed or petrified the target, one curse, including the target's attunement to a cursed magical item, any reduction to one of the target's ability scores, one effect reducing the target's hit point maximum. Okay. How long does that take to cast? One action. Just before you do. Do you feel you can resist this magic at all? I have attempted. If you steal your constitution. Again, the closing of the eyes. Fear that you've... Have, is your spell still going? A minute, so probably almost close to being finished. Yeah, nearly, but you do get the last little images of that clearing being blocked by stone and you receive an answer, I have attempted to. In the time I have traveled, I have tried. There are only a few things that may undo this. And do you know who has done this to you? Um, can I recast the, yep. the spell as soon as it ends? Yep. Sure. And the name of this be? That is what prevents me. Then I fear I cannot help at this present point. As you watch. How are you casting it on? Uh, tentatively. I guess he's on top of the cage, right? So I can kind of reach his foot. So it is a touch spell it's specifically? A touch spell. Okay. As you go towards a familiar feeling of scales, you hold your hand over its, over its foot and make contact. And as you do, 
feel this strength and you take your hand away as a burst of divine light erupts and spreads throughout this creature and as it does Gunner you suddenly see in your mind in, in its mind stone walls crumbling as you see the clearing again and you see a repeat initially of Fariso walking out and the Lord of Blades following you then you then see behind the Lord of Blades as though an enormous shadow hovering behind it and you see the Sun dimming quickly as the time is speeding further and further forward you see a large and then a massive shadow of leathery wings and this gargoyle face with these enormous whiskers that jut between it Fraser Blue and Tiamat, the Queen of Dragons, with these multi-headed, um, sizable body. But then it flicks back to Fraser Blue and stays in its shadow as the Lord of Blades comes forward. You. It has he as he looks at Farisa. What do you want? I am her servant. You will not be hers. And Fariso starts to flicker and flicker more. And you see this image of Fariso melting away as though it's his own skin is disappearing. Make me a wisdom saving throw, please, Gunnar. Is this magic? Yes, it is. <laughs> Use a small dice. <laughs> As a reaction, mm. um, a invisible force will come out of Dravago uh, and it'll vibrate through Gunner and um, stimulate whatever part of the brain. Stimulate me. <laughs> I'll stimulate you. Uh, would work with his, uh, his wisdom uh, and he will get a plus four to his roll with Flash of Genius. <laughs> to a, is it a saving throw or a check specifically? Uh, it is uh, a Billy check or saving throw. Yeah. Okay. As you suddenly... 19. Was that 19 in total? 19 total. Okay. Hell yeah. That's, that sounds better. <laughs> As you look towards Farisa, your eyes almost glaze over. And you suddenly are filled with some sort of terror. But then, almost like a cool breeze, greets you. And your eyes refocus with all of your might at some unknown, unknown force that is aiding you. It's aiding you. <laughs> and as you look on, the first Thing you notice is that the response is not of the voice of Farisa. No. You will not have a say, Lord of Blades. You will go. Take your armies. Release her. I will take care. And we will share a 
and Aura Victory. As the dark red robes of Malestra speak to him again. Listen. You have your goal. I am taking care of everything else. Your task is a simple one. And you receive it. She receives a reply. Good. Perhaps when Tiamat sees that I am worthy, you will be punished for your lack of fealty to her. Perhaps, she responds, but we shall see. Go. And she turns and she starts to fade into the forest as the Lord of Blades moves away. How did you resist this? You hear the voice of the dragon in your mind. How? This isn't my first rodeo. As the connection between you and it stops. She's still with us. Where'd she go? She stayed behind. I just sent I just sent Chris like six text messages. Being <laughs> <laughs> like that fucking bitch blast. <laughs> She's with the dwarf as well, isn't she? She is with Yes. We don't know this yet, only he knows. Yes. Yeah. But now Chris knows too. <laughs> um, I'll immediately cast Scrying mm-hmm. on Melestra. Okay. Anna, what are you doing? I don't respond. I can't respond to you right now. Mm-hmm. So I, I just sit down and I look like I'm meditating. All right. So it takes ten minutes. Saving throw. You yeah. can just yeah. Yeah. Um. Actually. Go on. Um. So because I just remember you've got to like subtract things and that kind of that's right, okay. thing. Has Melestra given me anything? Do we have anything of Melestra's? Don't think so. Not of uh, yeah. If we had Barclays here, maybe some DNA. Um, Disgusting. <laughs> he cleans himself, right? Handful of. They kissed not long ago. <laughs> Settle ah. down. Does anyone have the vials and those invisibility potions she gave us? Yes. She I didn't would. give us potions, did she? Yeah, she gave us. I, potions I would have kept the vial them. because I need vials for things. Um, Cute. So I will grasp that out of the bag before I do start casting it and I'll hold it in my hand and concentrate on her. So that means, I mean, you've already rolled, so that's cool. Um, but I will request, humbly request, yep. um, that you subtract. Where is it? Fifteen from your roll. Fifteen. Okay. Oh, sorry. No. Nine. No? Okay. No problem. So as you hold this vial in your hand, your mind travels back to what looks to be the fairly recent battle between the drow and the dwarves. And your eyes open. 
and hover over the cavern where she still is. At the moment, she's walking. Is she with anyone? With the Archmage Roniont, Duke Roniont, and they are speaking. Oh no. Together. And you can hear what they're saying, can't you? Well, I can hear her definitely, depending on how close she is to the other people. Um, I can also hear them too. They're pretty close. Ten feet. Yeah, they're within ten feet. As they are inspecting a bit of a, still a bit of a cleanup with the, um, with the recent battle. And you get a sense that there's acknowledgement between them as she says, it cannot happen. The dwarves are too weak to put up a fight. They are ravaged by the Red Death. You cannot muster them towards the ensuing battle. They need to rest. I will go to Karneth to train to Breland on their Valena and Zilago. We will have enough men to oppose her. But do not send the dwarfs of the Muro Holds to their deaths. They are without organization. I know, Duke, that. You are here, and they see you currently as their leader, but I simply do not trust that you can survive this. You hear Juke respond, I will consider this. It is an unusual request. But you speak wisely, Malestra. We are weakened. I will speak to the Dwarven captains and see what they advise. But I will take your words. And he breaks off. What is she doing? She stands. She watches him go. Make a perception check for me. An eternity later. <laughs> we. Is that gone? It's sitting flat. It's fine. Okay. Well, it was like, because it's so heavy, it was like... It's a big yeah. dice! It just pushes its weight down. It's really hard to make that look wrong. Um, okay. Uh, perception? Mm. 20. Okay. You notice immediately as he's leaving that she looks at him while, while he walks away and you can see a definitive smirk on her lips. Um, I will continue watching her for the rest of the 10 minutes if she, to see if she does anything else or, and if not, I will return to the land of the friends. Bold of you to assume we're friends. <laughs> All right. She can see about you. Get to see her. I'll just be a moment. 
an eternity later. <laughs> <laughs> Um, while you're doing this, I'm going to be looking at Thorum, and yep. I'm going to say, so, you spoke about fairy floss. How mm. do we make this? <laughs> Gotta kill Theros. He looks genuinely perplexed. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should get the servants to. Perhaps, yes, they might I, be. I just, I feel bad that you missed out on fairy floss. You sounded really excited about it. It's like a cloud made of sugar. What colour is it? All sorts. It can be pink or yellow. Yellow is not the best colour. I don't think yeah. pink's nice either. You can get blue or blue purple. Blue sounds good. Sometimes the middle of it's not quite cloudified and there's a big old chunk of crystal sugar right in the middle. I don't really eat much sugar. Well, it's pretty much only sugar. That's all it is. Maybe maybe we should speak to the, um, the guys that work in our home and we can have them put together like a circus themed feast. That sounds nice. And they'll be eager to do things after all this guy just wander in that time. <laughs> totally unknown. You, you don't seem too bad. Very, you don't very seem hospitable, your servants. Are they? Yeah. I don't know them very well. <laughs> I know you don't eat. But if you wanted to eat the fairy floss, could you? Well, didn't we try I this don't know. last time? I don't know what would happen to it. We'll find out. Like, hog up my insides. Have you seen one division? <laughs> we can clean. It. We can clean it out. Uh, you can clean <laughs> it <laughs> out. <laughs> no, Rook's really good at beast mastering. So, hmm. you're I have no idea what you're implying. That he's a beast that you could master. <laughs> Forged. Gonna, as you finish the spell. Just before the moment which the spell itself ends, the gaze of Malestra turns. And the smirk does not leave. Turns to me. Turns to the small, luminescent, fist-sized orb that floats just above her. That is the source of the scrying spell. And you can see her eyes flash over briefly as she looks directly at your gaze and then turns and continues down. And the spell ends. I'm going to immediately cast sending. Go for it. I'll stand up. Do we sing. hear this You hour? will see, yes. Yeah. Hey Gunnar, we're gonna have a feast. Molestra. Me no. You can that? either yeah. <clears throat> you can either oh hang on. You can either Surrender or die. Wait, go. Hold on, let it finish. If you think you can control the dwarf, you're wrong. What's everybody doing? What the fuck, Gunnar? Molestia's betrayed us. I fucking knew it. I hate that bitch so much. Where is she? She's still with the dwarves. She hasn't done anything wrong yet. Betray us how? Wait, let me rephrase that. She hasn't done anything to harm them yet. Hmm? Betray us how? I think she was the one behind Farizo. Wait, not the other way betrayed. around. Yes. So she... She was playing us. I don't know how, but she was. She manipulated Farizo and tricked us into believing Farizo had manipulated her so that when we killed Farizo, was that her or was that Farizo? And... I don't know the answer to these questions. All I know is she's behind all of this. And she's still in the city with the dwarves. Yes. And she knows. She saw me. 
Who saw you? Well, I don't know if she knows it was me, but she does now. Well. You, you said that she had not harmed them yet. She's trying to convince them to stay there and not seek out the Warforge, which I think is her intention. So, with that, she's behind it. Oh, so with that, I'm going to cast Sending as well. Sorry to copy your move. Um, I'm going to send Sending okay. to... You get sloppy seconds. <laughs> um, I didn't actually ask its name, but it doesn't say here I need to know its name, just a creature with which I'm familiar. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to send a message to the Celestial Avedo yep. that's standing guard in that same city. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say, Molestra works... Molestra works against the will of Ado. She is an ally of his enemies and has betrayed us. Destroy her. That's 25. Is that an allowed to Yes. You have to say that, though. Yes. Why don't we just pay Molestra a visit? I've asked the Celestial that stands guard there to do that for us. Why don't we just do this? We've, I've kind of used a lot of my abilities today. I don't know if we can take her down. How? Do you We almost died the last time we fought one of the twelve. <laughs> I assume you're talking of the Lester of the twelve? Do you know much about the twelve? Well, I know of them. They are quite reputable amongst Corvair. I'll fill you in in the most abbreviated version possible. Count Babby was manipulated by Farizo, who might have been Molestra. She's dead. Farizo, we we killed Farizo um, because he was also bad. Um, and now Molestra is bad. We so Farizo, Farizo could have. Well, we didn't kill Count Babby. We killed the ethereal version of her, which was actually by Salu. Um, there's a lot of, it's a lot to this story. It's not actually quite abbreviated at all, I'm sorry. Uh, so like, to break this down, are you prepared to join our group? So like a quarter like, of no, the twelve? Uh, <laughs> uh, dead or evil? Um, yes. Long story short, yes. Short story long. Uh, sounds like maybe we should uh, not trust the rest of them. Maybe we should kill them. One by one. Nah. <laughs> a reply immediately after you cast that spell. It will be done. We might not have the opportunity to uh, to speak with her. Why? <laughs> but Celestia Levedo is going to find her. Wait, you mean that god? Not quite a god. More like an angel. Do I hear her reply? She's going to leave me on red. <laughs> no, no, you, you will. It, it happens probably just just after you explained a little bit about what you've seen and heard through the mind of um, the dragon as well as Malestro. But it doesn't come in the form of in your mind. As though a voice above you is on some sort of megaphone. You see above you that this sun that was about to, or just starting to move the clouds away is covered again, but this time with a dark cloud, which starts to swirl around and around the sky above you and simply like an echo in the wind which is starting to pick up pace a simple sentence your servant is banished. Turam. Shit, he wasn't going to say Do not seek 
to defy me and my goals. If you come and seek me out, the power behind me will consume you. If I do not destroy you first, you hear this as as a shed of like a, this this crack of thunder and lightning from this swirling cloud from above just comes striking down and it is going to almost I need everyone to do two things oh no I need you all to make a dexterity saving throw and also a constitution saving throw please um while we're rolling this I'd just like to say that Aeoncraft posted the sweetest thing to Instagram where he was like Come and check out Fate's Grip, and it was us on his little TV. Oh, jeez. Thank, Thank you, Aeolcraft. Oh, Thank wait. You, I just rolled so... two dice. Oh. At once. Yeah, that's it what was... I was going to say. That was constitution. Yeah. Voikiban um, also subscribed. Oh, Voikiban. Thank you so much. That's really, really kind. Thank I... you very much. Um, I'd like know... to roll them again. So just just pick pick the first uh, what you Cons- want. Uh, Dex? Yep. That was better, so that's good. <laughs> And con. Con? Con. Con air. <laughs> that was movie. also better, so it's fine. It's so always um, the reply the reply. Save? <laughs> save? Is it a save? Huh? Is it a save? Save. Well, save. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Alright, alright. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> Argument for afterward. Um, I'll start with this. Dexterity 8, Constitution 22. Change my name. All righty. Dex 8. Is it all of us? Fuck. All of you. Very dexy. Two seconds. Um, you take the full 11 points of uh, lightning damage, but you are not blind either. Oh, I think I'm the opposite. Okay. Um, so 20 dex. Yep. Um, 13 con. Okay. Um, you do take, uh, what was it, 11? 11 points of lightning. Sorry, sorry. You take half that, so five points of lightning damage and you are blinded. You, see, you just see white and you cannot see anything at the moment. Um, uh, 11 for dex, 21 for constitution. All right, you take the full 11 points of lightning damage, but you are not blinded. Um, I had a 15 for dex and a 16 for con. Okay. You take 11 points and you are blinded. <laughs> Me and Rook are just like... Gunner? <laughs> Um, so two and seven. <gasps> so, okay, oh, so you same. take 11 points of mine. Um, should I also be rolling for kips? Yes, please. Uh, should I be rolling for two things? Yes, that'll be great. Choose different dice, then you can separate them. Yes. That's and I'll roll four. Um, John would like us all to hydrate, please. Thank you very Thanks, much, John. Cheers, John, and welcome to the stream. 16. Welcome. Nice. Um, We're all about to die. <laughs> so... To be gay. Yeah. Go on. Gibbs rolled um, a 18 for mm-hmm. his deck save. Um, and... Con save is because he has advantage. Oh, not as good. Um, oh wait, so eleven for con blinded. Uh, so Eric the spider mm-hmm. put a five for dex, but has evasion as one of its stats. So, so half it takes half. half. Yep, uh, and it got a. That'll be five points of lightning. Uh, 19 for yeah. constitution. Yeah, five. Uh, and <laughs> meow meow. <laughs> Sorry, this is in very stupid spots. To no, you're fine, you're yeah. fine. Yes, I've seen how silly these spots are. Yes. Oh, you silly uh, yeah. Yeah. Took me a year to learn. It's alright. <laughs> uh, so I'll dexterity down. was 20. <laughs> mm-hmm. And constitution was 13. Blinded and takes half damage. 
um, half damage for for kits. Yep. Which is rounded up. No five. Five. Rounded down five. Oof, kits is toasty. And then He's a dragon. at that moment, the swirly cloud for those who can see it <laughs> dissipates. That's so rude. And the clear sky very quickly returns. Can I see that these guys are blinded? Am I still next to Thorin? Yes. I'm gonna and yes, try and yeah. grab onto him. I make that easy to do. You can see who's who is uh, struggling to see. Right. So does anyone speak Draconic? Yeah. Or you hear the heinous, heinous swear words I'm yelling. <laughs> Me, I do too. Oh, you both do. Yeah, <gasps> just hard, just real, real bad. Like Not the like... equivalent of... <laughs> <laughs> you know, give us, give us you some know which ones it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and while I'm doing that, as a Mara grab, I'm going to cast Lesser Restoration and then the Blinded Effect. And so I'm going to steady Amara so she can stand up and then move over to... Are you blinded, Dravago? Uh, no, see? just the Steel Defender is. Let's see. The big cat. Lovely. Um, so I'm going to use up all of my third level... Sorry, second level spell slots and one third level spell slot. Um, ending the blindness of Big Steel Cat. Sweet. What's its name? I'm so sorry, I should have known Meow Meow. Meow Meow. meow. Is it a cat or a spider? But There's two. Both. Oh, yeah. Spider cat. My apologies. Spider Spider's cat. only tiny. Spider cat. Okay. Okay. See what I'm doing. Spider and also a cat. <laughs> um, yeah. Rook, can you see? No. No. I'm going to uh, knelt down and stay in position. I'm going to put my arm on his shoulder and restore his vision. I'll let you get up. I know you don't want any help getting up. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you like open your eyes or you walk outside for the first time after being in a dark room? Like mm. when you come out of a cinema? That's what it feels like right now. Yeah, the Don't like it. The back of your eye? Yeah. Um, and then are you blinded? Yeah. Uh, ben, if you could please do a little dance. Who's <laughs> <laughs> done it? Wake your band. Wake your band, thank you. Because you look sleepy apparently. Oh. oh. Oh, chicken heads, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Can we go on a break? I need 15 minutes alone with him. <laughs> no, I'm just oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, 10 will be fine. <laughs> double coins, I can throw it in. <laughs> um, I reach That's over and... I reach over and kill, kill Gunner of his blindness. Um, before you do, he also echoes the same swear word you let out in, in Dracon. <laughs> <laughs> As I cure, I, I hope I didn't just teach you that. <laughs> um, I pull out a dart from my equipment and I just angrily throw it at the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and then I say, Gunner, can you send her a message? Um. And can you make it from me? <laughs> Maybe if we go inside first before she, she, she electrocutes us. Sure, again. but let's do it while I'm still angry. <laughs> do you want to write it down for me? Yes, do you have a parchment? <laughs> yeah, I've got lots of it. Give it to me. I actually, I'll give you some parchment. I fucking write down this note. Excuse me. Allow me. Did we not just teleport back from there? Using our home portal? You went on it, went back to Palace Tower. Yeah. You spent you spent a good amount of time on Barclays airship to well, come back. Had to teleport back. What? I had to teleport back. I have another way to get there as well. Let's get from the message. Are you can't, can't do that right now? I told you I've used too much of my energy. I agree. We must rest. She was gather your resolve. We can always find her again. Maybe, Maybe the dragon can gift us with some energies. I'm done, Gunner. This is a video game. You don't know that. <laughs> no, I just ripped out like two pages with this book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to be there when you send when you send it, please. You need to make sure that it goes through. Could you sign it off with from Amara? Yeah. 
jump. Can we go inside now? I start to walk. Gunnar and Amara start to walk inside. You can see the ground is blackened and smoking with the remnants of that powerful magic from above. Can the dragon fit through the front door? <laughs> it's only a baby. Have I heard about a space? The size of the dragon, even if it's in, even if, uh, in its full now stretched out form, you can carry it. Oh. It's it's probably the size of a human two-year-old. Okay. That's right. It's tiny. Yak sized. Mm. No. This is a cute question. Um, where's Rego fell? As far as you were away, he had gone back into his tent, and you had not seen anything from him since the night before. Is a tent 110 feet away? It is. I'm gonna message him. No, I don't have message. I'm going to speak with him. And I'm gonna say, hey Regav, probably come talk to us inside. Probably stay away from outside. Doesn't sound good out there. Thunder, lightning, bad. Very frightening. Okay. Mamma mia. All right. Um, as you all, are you all making your way inside? As you will do so, um, the silver dragon is hovering and it's just sort of almost looks like he's levitating, but he's, there's this flight there with a flap of its wings every now and again. Um, very smooth as it follows you in and hurriedly behind you see a form of Regav Sel who is doing two things he's looking up at the sky <laughs> and he's disappearing and reappearing about 10 feet in front and then disappearing and then reappearing 10 feet in front of that that's funny disappearing reappearing as he looked worriedly up, up up in the sky and he appears at the front door oh hey um <laughs> is everyone all right I, I heard thunder um and there's something on the ground and I heard was that Melestra? Is she here? I want to just um You don't want to talk to her. Why? Because she's a fucking betrayer. What? Yeah. It turns out that everyone in the twelve is an asshole. Some of them are betrayers. I think I think we need to give him a better explanation. And we don't really have one, not really, but Melestra is the is the orchestrator of this problem. And perhaps you were right about Frieza all along. Maybe he wasn't the one in, Wait, in you control. left that part out. Well, there isn't a lot of evidence yet to prove that, but it just doesn't make sense. A lot of stuff doesn't add up. Why would he kill her if she was in league with him? It's only to then, I don't know, I don't understand. But she's behind this. And behind her is flat that blue. I imagine they're all behind the power of I'm going to turn to our newfound dragon friend here. What is your name? <laughs> I am Quivereth. Quivereth, you asked for a test, and so here it is. You must come with us and defeat this Molestra. If she is powerful enough to simply banish the Celestial, we will need allies. And young dragons are still dragons. We could use you. Then you will have what strength I have learned. Um, Rega Fel, can you protect this place from her? Do you have any... I have some warm? tricks up my sleeve. Alarms. I have this enchantment uh, in a sword that's pretty good. Um, it's a pretty powerful one, but I might need some understanding as to why I'm protecting against Molestra. Because she's 
She just attacked us. Try and kill us. With lightning. She's also aligning herself with Tiamat. It's not Tiamat, it's rather blue. Aren't they all together? No, Tiamat is... is not behind this. Right, Fraser Blue. I don't know, there's so many fucking evil dragons right now. I don't... I don't think he's a dragon. Same thing. That's racist. It's not the same thing. <laughs> one's a demon and one's a dragon. Very different. In fact, I don't even think that Tiamat is really they a dragon. They do share the same alliance. Yes, they're both evil. Yeah, they're all evil. I'm um, sorry. But do you have any kind not of... You. Abjuration magic then. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah, I do. The sword I have, if I, I <laughs> might need to, um, I might need to damage your your flaw. But I have this. I don't know whether you've heard about it, but guards and wards. And he just gives you a huge beam of smile. Have I heard of it? Yes, um, it is. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very powerful abjuration spell. Um, it creates a, a ward that protects uh, up to 2,500 square feet of floor space. Um, and it guards corridors with fog. It guards doors with uh, arcane lock. It guards stairs with web. Um, as though those particular spells have been cast on each individual um, component of the home. Um, and it lasts for uh, 24 hours. Um, it creates at least one gust of wind spell in every corridor. It creates a stinking cloud in two locations of your choice. It creates a, a dancing lights in four corridors. So it's, it, it, it's just a, it's, it also has a suggestion spell pre-worded in one of the corridors of your choice as well. And yeah, so it's it's a it's a multifaceted spell that you have heard of. What level is it? Six. Is this um, something that you need to use that sword for? Yeah, this I imbue it with uh, with the spell, and then I cast it by by holding it into the ground, and I can cast it again. I have another couple of items that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yay! The dab was a request. Beautiful. Very yeah. well done. Don't mind Thorum, he's just warming up. No, oh, that's okay. He does these stretches really, you know, at least every you hour. You get into the hands for that casting. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, yeah, I can cast it another three times. I can have it over four days. It's not easy to, to imbue, but I'll do it for you, if, and I trust you. Because I said Fariso was was not a part of this. I well, well, he was, but maybe not willingly. No, exactly. I I never thought Fariso could do such a thing. E evil. Just get to the bottom of it, please. And I'll I'll protect this place. We need to cut off. We need to cut off, cut her off now. Not physically, but she has a lot of power in her station in House Canis, as well as a member of the Twelve. She needs to be exercised from those institutions, so she can no longer wield that power. Isn't killing her just easier? No, it's not. I feel like it is. I feel like it also we is. We almost died fighting. Frizo, and she bested Frizo. What do what you suggest we do? Then? No, we need Frizo. We saved her. No, I think that was a ploy. I think she was playing us. Oh my gosh, Thorum, you've saved her so many times. Yes, I have saved her so many times. You shouldn't have done that. In we which we can end her. No, I think. I yeah, think let's just get a giant war forged and then she was throw it at us. What do you suggest we do then? We need to contact all of her her resources and cut her off and expose her from. And why would they believe us over her? They have no reason to. All we've done is walk around and trash talk the twelve. Well, some of us have. Yes. But we were right to. 
Can I ask, how long has it been since we left the Moor Holes? A week and a day. A week and a day. Okay, so she's what I'm truly interested in. Who would you contact? You can't think of one? I mean, aside from the king. We need to contact House Kenneth? Someone should tell Barclays. We should. In fact, that's probably a high on the priority list right now. Literally, as I said that, he texts me back. Florum's <laughs> huh. gonna pull out uh, all of the copper wire that he has. How much is that, out of curiosity? Oh, sh- that'll be like. It is a small piece of copper wire, and I got a spool when we were in there. So okay, I've cast the spell like four or five times. So it's out. The copper wire is one two. It's not consumed? No. Oh, then I have a spool of copper wire. Fantastic. <laughs> you ever bought that from Bunnings? Like one like oh, that? Oh, yep, yep. Yeah, like that. Yeah. It's like, like that. Like sure. That. <laughs> Just like that. Um, the, so yeah, I'm going to sit down and say, then we should contact... I think we should do both. We should weaken her before we set out. Gunner, you're right, we need to rest before we go. Keep in mind, if we contact these people and they choose not to believe us, then we're putting targets on all of our backs. We're letting them know that we don't trust her. And if she has more influence than us, then what's to stop her from sending people after us? This dragon. No offense. There are ways of extracting River information. <laughs> right. <to prove. laughs> <laughs> Whatever your name is. Um, but it is one dragon, and it is potentially an army of people. If she has this army on her side, then we are walking into a living, breathing death trap. We should contact the king at least. The king? I'm sorry, but two members of the Twelve, potentially, under his nose, we're doing bad things. At this point, the king is probably also evil. How, this stuff doesn't just happen because there are good people being tricked by a couple of bad people. This happens because there are more bad people than good. They outweigh us. We are better being quiet, sneaking in, doing what we need, and then getting out. It's like cutting out the cancer. Dravago, maybe your cancer here? People certainly come with a lot of uh, baggage, but I can't say it's not interesting. I don't, <laughs> I don't carry anything but a pouch. Is it a pouch of holding that holds all this baggage? <laughs> <laughs> no, Gunnar has the bag of holding. That has a lot of baggage in it, but... That's true. It did have Rosé's body in it. Skeletons in the closet. Bags holding. in the bag. I mean, <laughs> skeletons in the bag. There are. There is a dead body in it. Well, it seems that no, uh, this Molestra is part of the, the reason why I worry for these Warforged that follow the Lord of Blades, so... If she needs to be dealt with, I will offer my help. DM question. Did we keep Farizo's body? We didn't? I thought we sh- I thought we shoved it in the bag of holding with Osays. It fell into the lava. That's right. The silver dragon speaks up and it says In the short time I have seen you and spoken to you, you have done much already. I have heard that you are weakened. You have used much of your power and much of your mental strength, and I appreciate this greatly. I have an idea. Perhaps we can sleep on this or rest for the day and reconvene once you think of perhaps other options. If this Archmage is powerful enough to banish a servant of Edo and also convince an army to stand still 
and have her arms in many places, her influence to Amara's point. It's something to be said. But moving on her directly is also a risk. I have an idea which might help. It is unsafe, but it does provide an alliance of sorts to you. So you know you have more voices to help you convince the world that this Malestra is indeed behind this and that her influence would be questioned. I will think on this. moves back out of the door and around the corner to the left where the veranda meets the home of Pilot's Tower and moves out of sight. As you all are just inside, having seated at a now empty table that once had the foods of the night before now just neatly set out with a tablecloth of blue and two sets of vases with pink flowers that greet you with some sort of peace. And at that we're going to take our 10 minutes of break. So and, and we're at 8.46, so our, uh, our AEST time, we'll make it back at uh, 9.46. Hmm. 9.46? Eight, 8.56. 8.56. Oh, six. We're not gone for an hour. We are <laughs> here. Hold on, wait. Someone has to do a little dance before we go. Hold oh, on. who's doing a little hold dance on, before on. we go? Michigan, who's doing a dance? Who? Michigan? No, Michigan. The whole of Michigan. All of Michigan. All of Michigan. All of Michigan. If you're watching. Michigan? <laughs> just waiting for the response. That's okay. Who's doing the we'll, dance? Uh, we'll find Who's out. Who's doing the making? I don't otherwise, know. Otherwise, ID4 finally. Otherwise, maybe we all are. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. We, we might. I mean, that is that is definitely a good Really? Yeah. 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 Uh, hey. All right, hold on. I'll Be just... Careful what you wish for. Yeah, apparently. Um, oof, I think I've done these dances before, but I'll, oh well. Yeah. Oh. I love the facial expressions yeah. that go with it. Oh. I'm going to take a, a drink to that. Quick, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. throw silver. No, copper. Yeah, <laughs> enjoy. Um, with that, we'll take a 10 minute break. We'll go at uh, 8.57. We'll be back soon. Bye bye.
<laughs> well, yeah. the A plus table. Look at this. Are these dudes? One of these tables is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Ben is making me a drink right now, so. Look, can't fault that. Uh, apart from uh, for our amazing audience. Uh, penicillin. Welcome back, everybody. We are back uh, for the most part. <laughs> And uh, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. We're 60% back. <laughs> 100% all the time. We're 60% back live. We, we, we love them when they come in and they don't know where we're live, so they just keep talking. Uh -huh. It's excellent. This is, did you hear what John said? No. There's as much of us as there is of the 12 left. Oh. Hey. Oh. And 12 anymore is 5 on 5. Hey! Oh, game. <laughs> <laughs> Half court puck. Terrible. Um, I'd like to shout out my cat that is um, yes. sitting on top of the couch. The new couch like, a, <laughs> like the goodest of boys. Yeah. Like. Thank you very much. Yeah. This looks awesome. Uh, yeah, so if you're wondering during the first half why we were all just staring at Marvin McCallie, every yeah. now and then, the cat would do something fun. Oh, he also keeps like, you'll say something loud and he'll like pop his head up and then he'll oh. just. Okay, back to sleep. Oh, okay. I'm not, not that interested. interested. No, no, not that. No, he's just <laughs> like, he. Just yeah. is very apathetic. Mm, mm. We've lost. We've lost. Gunner. He's yeah. Dead. Gunner. Gunner wakes like up. He's got one morning. Um, no longer there. Also, when you mentioned the poor, like, yes, the poor, he's poor. Like, like he's over. Over. The poor is poor. Like came over. Yeah, when you see, touch the dragon's foot. He Just knows. the timing of it. He yeah. Knows. Yeah. yeah. He's Amazing. he's taken after his mama. No. <laughs> um. Cool. Well. Uh. Let's. Uh. We'll. Well, it's all good for Rook, but we will head back in. He's actually already started going after Molestra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, using his own his own teleportation magic. All yeah. right, so as the dragon oh, moves wait, away he's back from the again. door, that's okay. As the dragon moves away from the door and out of sight, Regav looks to you all and says. Well, um, do you want me to do this this guards and wards spell, or do you want me to wait until maybe you go and I can I can make the place uh, nice and guarded without um, without you here? Well, well, what do you? What I think do you... we need to protect it while we sleep. I agree. Yeah. Well, I can do it now. Yeah, just, will this affect us? Like, if I walk through the corridor that has Suggestion cast on it, and I, am I going to be Regav? Maybe. I I would probably say for guards and wards, maybe if you weren't here, that would be uh, the better option. Um. I can, I can also do... Um, I can also make as if the house isn't even here, and you can and you can stay here, and things will be fine. It's called hallucinatory terrain. I can do that. You can do that. Yeah. Oh well, I can do it so you can rest if you want. Would you prefer that? And so the house is gonna look like from anyone outside that it's like a hill. And nothing's there. Can we do both? Bless, Bless you, you. Amar. <laughs> Can we do both of those? It is... Perhaps hiding the home completely would not be in our best interest. The king knows where it was, so did Fariso. And if it's hidden, then it can hardly be a place of refuge or... You know, stand as an example for those of a place of good. How long does it last? Well, that spell uh, 24 hours. Okay. Oh. So you would only trigger that in the event of an emergency? If you wanted, yeah. Well, just for, just for the next 24 hours. Okay. Does this affect us? No, no. No, not at all. What if I look outside? If you look outside, you'll still, you'll see an open, uh, well, you'll know that, this, that it's an illusion, so... Uh, you'll know that it's really the real stuff. Okay, just want to make sure. That's okay. But I would like some sort of explanation 
when you know, and I'd like to exonerate Farizo when you know. That's my ask of my help. Yeah. With everything that's going on, weird, weird shit. Do you think maybe it's worth trying to scry on Farizo? The real Farizo might not be dead. It could be a situation like Count Bavi. Yeah, maybe. I'll do that before we flee. Good. Let us know how it goes, I guess. Um, do you know what goes well with sleep? Food. I agree. Should we um, talk to the kitchen staff about our little plan? I think that would be a better, more of a celebration feast when we return. Or it could be like a let's hype ourselves up feast. I have something that really hype us up in mind. Is it our intention to leave in the morning, first thing, to defeat Malestra? Are intent? we- are we going- wait, we need to hear out this dragon. They said they might have an idea, so they wanted to sleep on it. Let's not make plans. Let's plan in the morning. There are some things that I wouldn't mind doing tonight. Are you sure you're okay with this, Travago? If it um, will aid when it comes time for the advancement towards the Lord of Blades, then I'm willing to help. I think the benefit of this is that it all seems to be intertwined. I think if we cut off Molestra, we cut off part of the Lord of Blades, or at least the support. Seems like uh, all these people are connected in some way. Yeah, it's almost like they've all gotten together, controlled by some deity that, like, wants to kill us. For entertainment of others. Interesting, nonetheless. Mm. In... Within the time it takes for you to have this conversation, just before you depart to do your own things for the next few hours, it is still remembering about mid-morning still. So the day is yours to do as you wish. And let me know if you want to do anything specific. Mixade, the Metro D, the, um, the, the caretaker of the home, provide you with food and drink, enough to sustain you and to also make it a very good meal. Um, and that's a rolling, that's a rolling offer. So that's, uh, that's not an, it, it, every probably hour or so, just be aware. You are offered food and, and you take it if you want to. Snacks, fruit, um, crops that have been washed and prepared nicely from your own, uh, yields. I'll take the opportunity to stock my rations back up again. Mm -hmm. No problem at all. How, um, you, there's the rations are a plenty. So you just put... No, 30 I'd, days I think is my maximum. That's fine. Yeah, that's easy. No problem at all. So in those few hours, or however long you'd like to take, um, let me know if you have anything specific that you'd like to do. And or if you want to talk between each other and have a, have, have a moment to chat, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, technical question. Is anyone else watching the stream? Mm-hmm. Is it? It's going. Okay, good. Someone's streaming on Um, yes, I'm, I'm watching it and responding to myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, if no one else wants to go, I wouldn't mind doing something. Um, I would like to, um, first, Gunner, the bag of holding. Does it still have all of the prophecies in it? I haven't taken them out. Do you mind if I borrow the bag? Sure. So I'll borrow the bag. Mm. Um, where's Osei? She was with you for um, 
the majority of the conversation you've had after the circus, but she didn't join you for all of that interaction. She went back into her home, into the home. The presence of Osei isn't... Um, you don't notice where she's gone. Mm. Um, you didn't notice she went away from the conversation after, just before you all broke up, but um, you haven't seen her since. You assume she's just in, in a room that's assigned to her. I guess I'm going to reach out with my mind, and if she's within 110 feet, I'll speak to her. She can't reply, though, because she can't see me. Mm. Um, and I will say, um, sorry to bother you if you're resting. Um, it seems like we have a few hours to kill before night comes. Um, I know we started a long time ago going through the prophecies together. I wouldn't mind your help again going through those if that's okay. You can meet me here or I don't know, I'll meet you at your room or in at mine. Full stop, capital letter. Alright. Um Where are you when you ask this? When you I haven't to... moved. Okay. So I would have taken the bag from Gunner. Straight away and just like it would have been a, a straight away thing if we had hours to do so. Sure. Probably about fifteen minutes pass before you notice that she does she had left um, and is coming back from what simply looks like a walk or a stroll or something like something equivalent and as she comes up to you she has a little bit of beady sweat on her brow and she's a bit out of breath and she says I'm, I'm sorry but um, I actually just wanted to take a walk in your estate um, that's big and as well as that, I was interested to see if my constitution was the same as a living being than what I was. I just wanted to experiment, I guess. Uh, what were your findings? <laughs> there are limitations to being a human. Yes. But... It is good I am not affected by the sunlight, as I once was. That's definitely helpful, considering it's light outside. And you see, at the, as the time passes throughout the afternoon, it's sunny, warm, a cool breeze greets you from the east. And she says, um, I am more than happy to offer my insights into the... Uh, into the draconic prophecies again. I think um, you're in a lot of these, if not all of them, so it seems silly to not have you go through them with me. Um, on I top of that, I feel like you understand them maybe more than I do sometimes. More than we all seem to. I, I simply take them literally, <laughs> and that could be incorrect. And you'd be surprised. I don't feel like these prophecies are about me specifically. May I feel like they are more to do with outcomes, good or bad, mm. unwritten. It just so happens that I am a part of them, but as much as you all are. That's like my we, shred of wisdom anyway. I feel like we need some form of filing system. Unfortunately, with the infinite possibilities that there are, when looking at them, we, we can we can become quite lost, quite in despair. But well, maybe that's what we need to do: is recenter on them, see what they say now. Yes, you're right. Perhaps they would shed more light now with the events that have taken place. It's been some time since we've looked at them. Okay. Might I ask what these draconic prophecies are that you speak of? You want to come with us? Can if you want. If you're offering, it's uh, all very interesting. Um, Osei was the first. This is Osei. I believe we met a, a little while ago. Briefly. It's oh. good to see you again. I don't know because I, I walked out. Sorry. Travago, um, was it? Yes. Why do you look different again? To other others of your kind, it was uh, access to more variation of materials in my creation. 
That's then. right. Sigil, as a city has more advanced, perhaps, or just more readily available. Just more opportunity to source materials from different places. I see. Well, you're welcome here, and your companions, of course. <clears throat> and I think whatever you seek here, know that you are in the hands of trustful and powerful friends. And if they have agreed to have you here and with them on these travels, they will only lead you on a path of good. I would hope so. From what I've seen, they seem to have a, a better behavior than some of the more prominent members of Corvair. It <laughs> seems to be the case. The danger will follow them and us, but They've bested everything very easily before. Let's just hope for our sakes and perhaps the sake of Corvairs that that continues. Well, if nothing else, I stand to learn some very interesting things about this world. Do you even have forests where you are? None. There is no sky, no large bodies of water. I at first was taken back by the big open spaces here, but uh, I've, I've come to enjoy some of the features, particularly the night sky. I'm, uh, I assume it is very strange, even now that you've been here some time, to look up and see endlessness. When I used to look up, all I would see was the other side of the, uh, the Taurus that the city of Sigil's in. There were lanterns to mimic the night sky, but definitely not as beautiful or vast as what I see about me now. Some people call it beautiful, perhaps young eyes like yourself that have not seen too much, but others might see it as infinite hopelessness. Others may see it as infinite opportunity. Hmm. I hope this positive frame of mind does not wane on you, Travago. It rarely does. <laughs> what will you what will you be doing until this creature comes back to uh, discuss our way forward? I've uh, never heard of the draconic prophecies before, so I'm interested in finding out more. I also uh, might look for some materials in my tinkerings if there's any around. As you, all three of you start walking, where are you leading them, Amara, and if so, where? I was like, look between us all and go, well, my room it is. <laughs> As you're making your way up, a sage just starts to, to describe a bit about the draconic prophecies with whomever opens these prophecies which were built magically by the great dragons of old by the gods themselves it, it, uh, the legends say with their help whomever opens them they see a, a, a bite a, a moment of possible futures for themselves and perhaps for others. The magics are thus that if you are strong enough willed, they say that you can write your own futures and have them played out the way you'd like. But if multiple people can write out their different futures, surely not all these prophecies would be compatible. It's interesting, the magic within them finds a way to mould. But that f up until now there has not been an attempt, well, there's not been a successful attempt. There was a woman by Selyu powerful being who attempted to, but 
was overcome by these brave beings some time ago. One of the stories that uh, drew them to my attention in the first place. I've heard of this. I think many of Cor in Corvair have heard of this. You heard about by sailing? I heard about you defeating the Venerables. <clears throat> Guess I didn't realize how far this story went. Thorum's uh, persistence in getting it out there, I guess, paid off. In fact, I feel also Barclay is to thank a former member and one that also uh, spoke loudly and proudly of this fine team, the five. That's right, he used to draw pictures of himself standing on top of dragon's heads and hand them out to everyone. But these draconic prophecies, there are only a few of them. They tell a different story each time you open them. No one really knows as to why there are so few, if not so many, and not so many, and how to write your own futures within them. But they were protected by the dragons before the dragons slept. That is known. And then they were scattered. Somehow, a fair few of them ended, have ended up here. By chance or by design. I'm not sure. And as she finishes saying that, you enter in the door of your room we'll let everyone else the enter. bag and you close the door behind you yeah like three quarters of the way yep. not the whole way i'll leave like crack in the door okay all right then i'll <clears throat> with okay. the intent of only the fast rent coming out not yep. everything yeah sure all right four of them four come out D4. In the meantime, what's everyone else doing? Thorum, mm. can you heal Kips? Yes. Show me Kips. How is he hurt? How is he hurt? Mm. The lightning. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I pull out Kips and he is like. I forgot about that strike. He's a roast turkey. <laughs> <laughs> he is very cooked. <laughs> cooked um, with a K. How like how cooked is he? <laughs> he's, he's fairly hurt. Oh. Um, there's, he there's took a... five damage from <laughs> eleven uh, from a total of seven hit points. <laughs> he could have died. His, his, <laughs> his entire that. body is um, is blackened. Right. So I'm I'm gonna. I'm gonna use. So he looks awful. Mm. He looks real bad. The worst you've ever seen him. You can you can see that his movements are sluggish compared to his normal sprightly. It's fine, swooping, just banish him. Swifting. <laughs> um, then I'm guess I'm just gonna lay a hand lay a hand on him and cast cure wounds. Okay. Go for it. That is seven points of healing damage. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm alive. Healing damage? I'm a life cleric too. So that's enough. That's nine. He's bathed now. He's and bathed. as you watch, <laughs> all of those scales shine red again. Uh, as his form just becomes more and more healed and gonna holds him close and Kips gives you a very light gives you gonna a very light lick of appreciation in your mind gonna and in your mind Thor thank you very much I was weakened but I am now strong what does it kill you? Oh, okay. 
Can I reply to him? You can try. I'm going to try in my mind. And I'm just going to say, I'll speak out loud to him instead, just to be certain. I'll say, there's no problem, Kips. You should croak or make some noise if ever you're so injured again. It's easy to forget me when you're tucked away inside Gunner's cloak. In your mind, he responds, and yours, you can hear him as well. You are correct. I, I apologize for my, um, for my silence. I did not want to disturb what you were doing. You seem to be in the moment to be quite distracted, and for good reason, of course. But um, next time, uh, I will certainly um, scream in pain. Well, yes. simply no. I, I will. I'm, I'm a, a little more um, uh, on, honourable than that. But I will. I will make myself make, make you aware of my um, wound. Yes. Very well, kids. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, I've been cutting off. Where is Regafsel? I'm dead. Cell <laughs> is outside. Again? He is in the process of casting a spell. Ah. Uh, is he doing that? Not the sword, but uh, he's hallucinatory, hallucinatory terrain. terrain. And you don't notice anything different about the landscape around you. But you do feel this almost slight heat rise up from the ground as you notice that there is a magical effect taking place. But you can see past the illusion immediately. I'll I'll watch while he casts his spell and when he completes it, I'll I'll talk to him. Okay. It takes not long at all. He finishes it and he looks around, giving him a, a bit of a mental pat on the back at his, at his achievement. All that's good. <clears throat> what does it look like? It looks like a hill. <laughs> I guess that's pretty cool. Um, oh yeah. I have a question actually. Fire away. Fire one. Away. Oh, oh don't, don't leave. You can stay. Just tell me. Okay, um, is there a way we can pay for this kind of service? Like, is there, are there people that do this as, as like their job? Do they Like provide? traveling salesmen, but just, just in the magical field. Yeah. Can they like cast enchantments and wards and um, those kinds of things on a premises to protect it? I've, I've heard that if you do it for long enough, it eventually becomes permanent. Oh yeah, I've heard of those things. Um, I know of a spell, oh I heard, heard a story of a, of a wizard who cast, uh, I think it was um, something like he, he made a fortress come out from the ground. Um, and this fortress was there, and if he didn't do this uh, and he did. He concentrated, put the same spell in the same place with the same towers on there every day for I think it was a year, two or two or two years, and then it just stayed there. Um, I mean, hiring that sort of magic is doable, but it'd be quite expensive. What? What? How much? Maybe not a fortress, but sure. These kinds of spells. Um, that one you just cast, and maybe some others I have in mind. Well, um, depends on the spell, the components that the uh, labor costs. Um, you know, to have someone come back or stay at your premises for uh, the amount of time allotted. Um, what, if, could... what if we? Um, well, firstly, do you know anyone that does this? Oh yeah, I've got. I mean, I have some some uh, friends in the business. I could. I could call on okay i think i'm not sure about the others but i'm happy to enlist someone services yeah yeah well i've got this friend um his i think oh i I can't remember his his um i think his last name was the lion dan dan his first name is Dan, last name Delion. He's great. He can he can do that. Um, he'd be able to. Uh, I, I, he's in Shar, and I can call him over. Um, he can probably be here in a couple of days if you'd like. That's a very colorful name. Um, he's not. It's not. I mean, 
it's I, I don't know why they his parents chose it, but he, he's a good he's a good fellow. Good. Um, so uh, maybe I'll give you a list, and maybe he can give us a quote. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, just bear in mind that um, he's one of the. His services are the cheaper on the cheaper side, but he still does a good job. He's a bit eccentric, um, but he's kind-hearted. His prices, though, are still, you know, maybe to, to cast a spell and his time every day uh, in a similar vein, maybe a hundred gold a day, that sort of thing. With meals and 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 all expenses paid, that but you'd have a permanent spell on your hands, depending on what you're after. What if he um? What if he stayed here? Yeah, that would be in, in, involved. Yeah. Yeah, he'd, he'd probably want a room as well. That would be included, and the spell itself in that about a hundred gold a day. I can see if he can make it any lower. Uh, I'll tell him we're friends. Okay. All right. So, thank you. That's okay. Um, here is a list. Okay. Send it through. Um. Whenever you're ready, it's okay. I'll text it to you. Okay. Um. Also, I have these boots. Oh, they're uh, they're very nice. I they're don't great. Them anymore. Oh. Um, where can I sell them? What did I do again? Boots of Immobility. Ah, yes. Um, if, if you don't... I think I bought them from you, actually. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if you don't want them anymore, I'll just, I'll just buy them back. It's okay. I, I have prospect of buyers. Okay. Okay. Okay, bye. Cool. Are you exchanging... Yeah, we'll, we'll sort that we'll out. We'll work it out. We don't, we don't need to do that on the stream. That's okay. As you as you exchange you the um, the coin for the boots again, um, Thorum and Rook. Um, do you want to do anything in these few hours that you have free, specifically? Jump. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I'll probably take a walk out in the grounds, um, just get a bit more used to the surroundings. Okay. Awesome. If that's the case, I was actually planning to head out in the grounds as well. Um, but I just want to ask one of the servants of there, is there a crypt or a holy place or something in here? It's important that I, I want to bless it in the name of Ada before we make this place our home. Um... One of the servants, this uh, one of the children of Mixade, um, uh, one of the three children, comes up to you. Yeah, um, there's one uh, that's a little ways uh, north. Uh, that's that's the king used it um, if he found like uh, like like dead people in the forest. Um, it's just it's just people that might have died because of wild animals or something. It's just a few a few graves there, uh, but there's a bit of a shrine you can't miss it. That sounds about right. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you, young child. I'll give him a silver. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, and he, he goes off. Um, are you both traveling together? Or are you doing doing so separately? I'll walk with if you want to come, but I want to go and see this crypt in the north. Yeah, I'll go to the crypt. Yep. Okay. Well, you you beeline it there, and in the in the space of just to describe the the surroundings, as you leave the mansion, you meet that thin stone wall which um, you are let through. Directly beyond that, there is a space, a diameter around the. Um, around the estate which is just bare land it's all it's just plains which stretches probably a couple of hundred meters before you get to forest as, and then go on as we're walking i'm going to turn to rook and say listen i was lying to that little kid back there 
I don't really want to go into the forest and pray. I'm very much going to loot these graves when we get there for their components, which will help us in the battle to come. <laughs> Is this something that NATO priests do regularly? Uh, <laughs> when it calls for it. Inside. Inside. <laughs> I might actually roll an inside check on that. Are you trying to deceive? No, we'll do anything when it calls for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, um... Sound only fans. Like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> that's fairly truthful. Um... I mean, do what you, you, will. you hear you hear this this inkling of a almost a touch of uncaringness to the, to it, yeah. more of a chaotic streak. Yeah. No, but we'll do this respectfully with prayers and respectfully. <laughs> the care I have at this point is little, but I do have a quandary. Do you have any family? I did. I was taken from them when I was young and sent away. And you don't know where they are? I did not return. I don't know what you know of Kabara, but the dragonborn that ruled there are uh, uncompromising in their views. And it would not do well for me to return to such a place where I have so many enemies better for my family for them to think that I well to think I'm still rotting in the dreadhold that's what they think I am and if I returned well as much as I care about looting these graves that's how much the other dragonborn would care about using those people against me I wonder if your family was in these graves would you be so callous we burn our dead for exactly this reason. And do you burn their possessions with them? The possessions I will leave if that bothers you. I just wonder. Mm-hmm. This, this is, is a decision that you make on your own. I have not... Believe me, I'm not going to simply just loot the gold out of their graves. There is a higher magic to what I'm trying to do here. Remember, this is King Borinar's land. Yes. That's two for two, guys. <laughs> I'm not so sure he would be happy if he knew that you were trifling through maybe his dead descendants. That is true, but these are not his descendants. These are randoms that he found in the forest. Sorry, that's, that's a more thorough way of saying that. <laughs> Random peasants that he found in the forest. Again, just, just a, a conversation. conversation. Hmm. As we have this conversation, we are surrounded by the ghosts of the dead. Hundreds of them watching and listening to us. I'm going to free these few of their confines and then we'll free the rest of them that are standing amongst us. Are you talking about the ones that the dragon spoke of? That are apparently from the moorlands and are stuck here. Yes, they are apparently all around us and watching us, even now. Always watching us. Do you trust, trust that, that dragon? dragon? think for a minute. No, not particularly. I think I trust him to act as dragons act in his best interest and the interest of his kind. I find this also convenient. Mm. The circus, the dragon, the illusions. Molestra. What do you believe is the best course for them? I believe heading back to Victor is the best course for them. You think we should go and confront the Lord of Blades first? I'm not sure. But I know what I need to do. If you think we are better served defeating the Lord of Blades first and leaving Melestra until afterwards, I can see a, I can see the logic in that. 
I'm not so sure, sure if the others may think so kindly of them. I think you, uh, I think you underestimate them. Ghana was eager to undercut her power. And what better way to do that than to destroy the army that she leads? Yes, my wanting is, I must admit, somewhat selfish. He's my family. We are all doing this for similar selfish reasons. I cannot waste too much more time here. Very well. Well, if you wish to leave after the Lord of Blades, I'll come with you. Make your case to the others. It's up to them. Perhaps I shall. Help me loot these graves. Uh, I'm assuming we've arrived at... <laughs> By that stage, you've only reached the edge of the forest. To the north, in the direction of where the boy uh, directed you, the, the plains are your abode. And throughout these plains, there were small plots of uh, crop. So corn, um, other vegetables, root vegetables mostly. You saw a couple of houses that, that seemed to have little pens that had um, uh, pigs and chickens and, and um, other meats that you would assume would be for you. Um, so it looks like this land is being well tended, well cared for. Um, and the forest itself that's before you is still your land, yours, that was gifted by King Boronel. And you know that this forest lies about maybe a kilometer further, goes about a kilometer further north until it reaches a perimeter from where, of where you have um, your land ends and the land of the Brelish begins. And this land, this forest is now unkept, wild. The forest itself has plenty of space in between um, very thick trunks and enormous height. But between the trunks, there's plenty of spaces that you that you've uh, that you can navigate through. And as you walk through, you jump over roots that are jutting out of the ground. You pass by many types of insects, lizards, um, mice, rats, and, and snakes that make up this forest as their home. Rabbits and wild horses you see in the distance moving between the trees as well. There are small clearings every now and again where you can see that there are a, a small group of uh, bears that are making their home here, as well as wolves that follow you but don't engage um, in a pack a while away as well that you notice. You specifically, Rook, notice this. And... Do you let me know about the wolves? Yeah, I'll point. I'm actually thinking, I'm contemplating hunting game in this area would be fun. Yep. Um, you do see uh, groups of deer mm. uh, as well that are uh, either in groups or individual. Um, you notice as well, you, f you hear a low growl coming from a distance echoing through the trees, which as you look, you notice a distant owl bear that's hiding and, and stalking, but not coming any closer and soon disappears behind more trees. And with another half an hour's worth of travel, you find yourselves in a, another small clearing where, true to his word, a small set of graves that have been overtaken by vine, moss, and tree roots are laid out in probably a 20 by 20 meter open space um, and in the very center that's a little bit crooked outside of the ground as though the ground itself is heaved up slightly by roots growing from underneath you notice this enormous stone 
um, what do you call it? Um, like a, like a small plaque. Sorry, like a big plaque, probably about three meters high, and about a meter thick, and etched inside uh, on this this plaque in common with what looks to be the seal of Breland, uh, of Shan, sorry, the two towers with the bridge in between are blue. It's etched, here lie the unknowns, the citizens, the lost. May they rest forever. <laughs> I, um, I'm, I'm, where are the grave? I'm, <laughs> I guess the interest, so I'm, I'm waiting for Thor to, to do something. Mm. There's ah. uh, counting them. There's probably about thirty-five gravestones. Are they dated? They are actually yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna turn to Rook and say, <clears throat> "Listen, man. I used to. I've written stuff like this on all sorts of stone doors all over the realm. I'll let you in on a little secret. You heard about that tribute? That." Uh, Giant stone plinth in the middle of Shan, the tribute to our battle. Well, how could I forget? Yes, yeah, well, I made that. So, <laughs> lots of people, trust me, it's really easy to write something on a piece of stone and then make people feel reverential about it. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, Shit, you broke the DM. <laughs> so, I, I said it's all wrong. I, I do not judge you, but for me, Picking from the dead on a battlefield is different to digging someone's corpse and taking from it. I'm Someone's not... taking the time to put these to rest. That's fair. This isn't survival right now. How did I say that's fair? I wound up to take a swing and smash the oldest grave, but I stopped to let him get the second part of that sentence. And I went, yes, thank you. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I, I, I take a step through. Is there any, like, tall, like, any pillars or anything? Even tall graves. They are different. They're different heights. Yeah. But no, there's only one that's about a meter tall. That's the tallest. I um, take a few steps back and take a lean, hold my arms. Have at it then. I have at it. I, right. I allow him to do what he wants to do. And what are you doing? I'm gonna smash the six oldest graves. Yep. At each time I crack them open, are they stone covered in stone, or are they buried beneath the? They're buried in, like, the actual bodies are buried in the ground. You see a small mound, <laughs> just, and it's the, it's the, it's the stone... Suddenly you're just being destructive. <laughs> sto- okay. Stone little plot is coming out of the I head of each one. Do I see this? You see him going for a grave. It depends on what you're doing. You see all of this. Uh, Thorum is starting at the wrong place. <laughs> Don't you need to dig down? Yes, I realised that. I thought... <laughs> Never mind. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So, Forgive me. Do you have a spoon? <laughs> no, I don't. You do have a shovel. Oh, shovel, come on. That's not the problem. <clears throat> what are they? I'm gonna start digging. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just make a, a general constitution check, please. Constitution check. You die. <laughs> Ooh. Seven. Takes you the better part of an hour to dig up two. Can I, before he finishes yeah. the first one, uh huh. Have you got your back to me? Can I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. As he's digging through, <laughs> um, I'm going to make a slight of hand check. I'm going to use plant growth. And I'm enriching the soil to make it more difficult for him to. <laughs> dig so you're gonna soil. push him in? I was like, <laughs> 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 okay. We'll make a spell. Make a sleight of hand check. Sure. So Thorum doesn't notice you casting a spell. Uh, make a perception okay. check for me as a counter. Nah, that's not good. Um, who needs wisdom as a cleric? Eight. Good person. Okay. <laughs> you keep digging, but as you do, I mean, this this first one probably wasn't the best one to go with because there are roots that seem to be covering the corpse from above. You're not sh- quite sure how they managed to get a corpse underneath this these roots or if the roots over time just grow over it. But being the oldest one, you assume that, 
yeah, roots are going to grow over this thing, and it's difficult, hmm. which is why it takes you the better part of an hour. After I dig through those roots, I go, well, I can't be, I can't be bothered digging doing this six times. <laughs> are these graves next to each other? They're probably about a couple of meters apart. Sweet. So once I dig to the bottom of the first one, I'll just dig sideways at that level. So cool. This is 150 feet right here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, every one of them, for some reason, they all have these roots. And, and going going straight down or sideways doesn't seem to make a difference. So this is instantaneous as well, so I, I kind of take a couple steps forward. What happens to be the problem? There's all I sorts you said you've done this before. Yeah, there's all sorts of roots and plants around. It's like the forest itself doesn't want me to desecrate <laughs> these graves. Mm. And yet I persist. <laughs> Maybe you should pray to Ada. No. No, I'll do that at the end. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, you gonna help me with this? No. <laughs> <laughs> when this eventually saves your life, are you gonna admit that this was the right thing to do? Come on, you're what? Eight foot tall? Put your back into it, boy. I take my cloak off and <coughs> pretty much all of my heavy, heavy sweaty gear and just throw it up over the lip. <laughs> all right. To make myself a bit freer, but I still like to assist. Sure. Um, okay. Three levels of exhaustion. <laughs> 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 I, with the bones that I collect, uh, I very reverentially take them, wrap them in cloth, and put them into a sack, which I throw over my shoulder. Clank, clank, clank. <laughs> as well as three sets of human remains, you also find a couple of extra bits and pieces. Oh, sick. In, 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 uh, <laughs> and around each. Each being either has um, a small container, wooden, that seem to have its last effects next to them that you find. Some of them have them just on their person underneath what looks to be um, disheveled and rotting clothing as well. Um, so, apart from the bones that you find, you also find three diamonds um a crayon tv just called this the bone sack <laughs> amazing three diamonds uh you also find some eggshells <laughs> you also find a little bit of um gold dust you're writing these dings down he is not. No, He's I'm, not. I'm not touching them either. Okay. Uh, you also find lime, mm -hmm. specifically lime, like actually lime, like limestone, not li actual fruit lime. Um, some remnants of what what looks to be, and you know this particular spell component to be licorice root. Mm. Um, bear in mind, I'm I'm reading out like particular spell components, so just so you're aware, because um, yeah. Uh, a ruby. Or almost steal the bodies, but not the components. That's okay. Just, just making sure you're aware that they are from a list I've got here. Um, a ruby and what looks to be silver powder. Sick. Uh, I leave all of that there, That's except okay. for the three diamonds. Sure. How much do they look like they're worth? Um, <laughs> they one million dollars. <laughs> They look like they're at least a thousand gold pieces worth each. Beautiful. <gasps> Take all three and I'm going to climb up out of the grave and say, Rook, come look what I found in the hole. And I hold up the three diamonds. Yes, the belongings of some poor traveler. You are so correct. Tomorrow, we are going off to stay's danger. And if one of us should die, I could use these diamonds to revive us, but I do not have any others. So the choice is yours. Should I throw them back in the grave, and when I'm one of our companions needs to be revived, condemn them to the void? Or should I take them now? I don't have a spiritual god to guide me. You make that decision on your own. No, no, I throw them at his feet. They're yours. The time will come when I need uh, you to decide whether to take them with you now. We'll leave them here. And one day when the time comes for us to, for me to revive one of our companions to save their life, I'll ask you what choice you made. I turn and leave. Oh! <laughs> oh, hey! 
Um, I smirk. And how much hard work do you want to put in for this disguise you play? Yeah. What disguise? Well, you're putting the burdens of others onto me, and yet you're a priest. Should you not just work out of the love of the gods? Or would you blackmail others like you've done so here? I turn on that. What kind of cleric are you? I'm a cleric of Ada. I continue leaving. I can't see what you're doing at this point. So okay. whatever you choose to do, Thora won't see it. I leave the diamonds. Okay. I actually I put them back in their graves. Okay. Sure. Right. <clears throat> so this you... air is so thick. <laughs> I can't breathe. So you um, you put the diamonds back where um, one in each um, final resting place, and you move away. Um, Plant growth I can concentrate on. Yep. And I do my best to cover. cover the graves, yeah. You do so very well. Um, you don't see the the resting places anymore. The roots a light brown make a very small sound as a crunching as though a crunching sound as they sort of bind together like fingers in two hands as they cover the entire three places. Yeah. Spaces. Um, being a bit more native to this land, uh, I'm gonna spend maybe a couple of hours just taking amongst the surroundings and um, maybe try, try and understand whether or not these are Greek or New Syrians or okay. refugees that are lost. Sure, okay. Are you also trying to make it back in time for the uh, for the silver dragon to, oh, uh, would I have a session of how you, you would you would have a couple of hours. That's okay. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll do this all within. Um, okay, but you won't be able to do anything else. No. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thorum, you walk back uh, alone. You don't see Rook following. Um, are you? What are you doing with uh, with yourself after this? I'm going to get back to the. I'm going to get back to the manor, and I'm going to Gunner, Where are you? Um, is this happening concurrently? It is. So what would you be doing? Um, I would be writing. Mm -hmm. What are you writing? Um, just hypothesizing, writing information down mm -hmm. um, about what I've learned today, um, what I think is going to happen. Um, just a little like thoughts and, and ideas. Okay. Trying to trying to come up with new ways to push my abilities. Yeah. And uh, where are you doing this? How, actually, can I counter that with a question? How big is the house? The house is three levels. So it's like a complete square. It's a good um, 9,000 square feet of floor space. It's, it's a massive house. Three, three levels, square. So a complete square? square. Yep. Um, With balconies, all 360 balconies on every level that make up part of that too. All made up of a very, a very um, light, Soft wood. I'm just going to be sitting on the stoop of the house. <laughs> sure. At uh, the front? Yeah. Okay. And you do see it. Um, I'm going to approach and go, Gunnar, do you have the bag of holding? I need to put some stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> what? The bag, the pouch of maximum capacity. <laughs> <laughs> of large volume. <laughs> the bag we stashed Jose's corpse in. What about it? I have other things to put in. <laughs> I, I don't have it right now. Oh, who has it? Amara has it. Oh, tell me when you have it again. I throw the <laughs> sack over my shoulder and head up to my room. What's that smell? 
Would it smell after all that time? There's definitely a, a distinct dirt smell. Mm. Nothing, nothing of flesh or bone, but there's a very earthy smell that follows follows you. That is uh, that stands out a bit. Have you been digging? Ah, uh, yes, yes. I have no doubt. Rook will tell you anyway. Um, that crypt at the north. I looked for components, magical components. What are you doing? I'm got them right here. No, what are you doing with them? The components of the spell are creatures which were once alive. And you know what type of magic. What, you, what is the point of it? What, what are you going to do with them? There are a great many things you can do with this. Magics. You could reanimate the dead, summon them. Dark magics, which you have not yet seen me perform. Is this so we can fight? Yes, this is so that we can fight, and most importantly, so that we can live. I hope you understand the direness of our situation, that I've not resorted to this yet. Yeah. Makes sense. I clap him on the shoulder. Very pragmatic. <laughs> Thank you for your pragmatism. My head upstairs. Okay. And as you, Amara, and Dravago, and Osei are in this room, you hear the sounds of I guess um, soft speaking from outside but you're concentrating on this bag and the four draconic prophecies sealed that have exited the bag after you've mentally you know how the bag works as you ask for what you desire from the bag it, it appears Osei looks at you and says what is your intention with this? Well, this is what started our journey, and it's been a long time since I personally, or I think a lot of our group, have looked at these prophecies. You said so yourself. They determine potential outcomes, and those outcomes can change. Our path has changed so many times. I have to wonder if these prophecies have changed too. And also, I feel like consistently I'm a step behind everything. Like, I'm always getting surprised by someone who I trust that betrays us and I don't want that to happen again. If this can give me some form of a glimpse into what to expect, then I'm not gonna be upset about it. Let us hope that is going to be the case and not simply give us a vision of pain. You, with the description of what I've told, what Amara's intentions are, we have the resource here. Would seeing a potential outcome of your journey forged, would it be a benefit? Or would you simply want to see the outcomes of ours? I think knowing a potential outcome before it happens might actually steer me towards that outcome. I'm Good. not phased with potential futures, I'd rather make decisions based on what is directly in front of me. So. If you would like to see your visions, I wouldn't mind hearing about them, but... Uh, you don't want to see them? I don't think I need to partake myself. Okay. I'll tell you if I see anything that may interest you, like the Lord of Blades or something. I'll see him soon enough. Okay. I'll just... I'll look at the four of them. And I'll just kind of like trust my intuition and pick whichever one feels right, I guess. Sure. They all look fairly mundane. And you know for a fact you haven't you haven't seen 
within all of them but as you pick one up the seal of silk around the prophecy is back to being bound as you unscroll it and slowly open the prophecy as you look towards Osei and Dravago and then back towards the script you feel the familiar feeling of being almost pushed back into another space and the view of the room disappears in a quick rush as though you've been just teleported to somewhere else and in front of you instead of this room before you the first thing you see is a familiar street in Rote where a familiar gnome speaks to you about a potential job <laughs> regarding a being who may or may not be a real demon in the flesh. It's like a memory. As he speaks, you notice that the same form is talking back at you, the same voice. But there is a shimmer behind him now that he wasn't there when you saw him initially. And the shimmer is one of a dark pink, as though as though a shadow be above beyond this being is directly behind him. But then you look up at the sun and you look down at him and you know shadows. Mm. And this one isn't where it's supposed to be. It's not on the ground. It's not on the wall that he's leaning on. It's as though it's a halo around his body. And then it stretches out more and more. It stretches behind him. And behind him you see this large red worm like creature with pincers and these 20 eyes around its face as the shadow moves and as it holds up one of its arms this gooey appendage this gnome's arm raises and rises and you remember that movement that he did while he pointed towards Miss Marsh and then this is Fripp right this is Fripp yeah and at the same time as his other arm moves up it seems to it seems to float up directly after this other movement of the arm of this creature behind it and then you look to your left you see people walking down the street as you did see as you did remember some of them with normal shadows others walking behind them these quarry the same forms that move behind them and, and guide them some with carts others with families and then your vision stops there and you are rushed rushed towards an outcrop you haven't been here before as you look left and you look right it's a wilderness green lush grass and this rocky small hill and at the top of the hill only if maybe 20 meters away there sits Oberdin 
this old man looking out and next to him Gunner also looking out and they just are there observing you can't really see what but they are silent and then once again your vision fades from that scene and you are back in the room I say as though just releasing a breath as she took only a moment before and she does speak because she does appear to see you come out of some sort of pause she says is everything all right that was very very weird really weird like all of the prophecies that we've seen have felt like the future and this felt like the past it felt like it was it kind of felt like it was showing me something that i missed and if that's the truth, then I missed a lot. There's a lot of Cory out there. And then there was Gunnar and Oberdin, and they were sitting on a hill. And that's it. It was just before we met you. We were being sent to investigate that demon in the tavern. I was talking to Fripp, and there was just Cory everywhere. Were they simply in the flesh, just walking no, around? No, they were almost ethereal. Like weird little hovery shadows. But I'm everywhere. Even Fripp. Well, uh, could still be something about the future, perhaps. I don't know much about why you might have seen Gunner, but whether it, I, it doesn't seem connected. Perhaps you simply saw two different visions. It's weird because Farizo told, told, told us told us not to trust Obradin, and so did so did a couple of people that I guess have turned out to be pretty shady people. Maybe Oberdin isn't the villain. I don't know. Might have done some bad things, some questionable things. Maybe he's not the bad guy. Wouldn't that turn out to be a surprise? I mean, at this point. <laughs> what is a surprise anymore, I guess? Yeah. Um, Are you going to tell Gunnar? Yeah, I will. It doesn't seem like the scene was... A detriment to him. It feels... I don't know the Mornlands very well. And I don't know... I know parts of Gunner's past. I know about his studies. I know about what Oberdin told us. But everything that he told us was that he was trying to mentor Gunner. And maybe there were ulterior motives, but that's all it looked like. And it looked like, I mean, the, the field was, it wasn't the desolate wasteland of the Mornlands. Hmm. It almost, and this is an assumption, but it almost felt like before. Interesting. Would you mind, perhaps, if I took one? and revisited perhaps my... You can take all of them if you want. Can I look at one? You can look at all of them if you want. Just one. I think that is all I can bear. Go for it. And she takes one and unfolds it, slowly opens it up, and you can see the script to move towards her in a bright white light, and then in a moment, she shuts it quickly. Oh. 
almost doesn't look as positive. I didn't understand a lot of it. Uh, she sort of gives you a quick look and then looks away. Um, well. What did you say? Some of it was good, some of it was bad. Do you want to hear all of it? I mean, yeah. Is that okay? You don't have to tell me. Well, I'll tell the bad first. Good idea. What did Silver Dragon said about the two realities? About this instance before the calamity, before the explosion. Mm. There is another place where the battle is still happening. In the moment where the, the armies of Corvair are violently attacking one another, another for, the, for the sake of all of the land. And then the explosion happens and then they reappear and fight again. And behind this is this Frazo Blue who sits atop of a mountain looking down and simply laughing. But then the dragons, I saw the dragons appear above him and cast him down to be trapped. But I did see then a battle that is possibly to come where dragons are awake and though they have claimed victory Molestra escapes and you all lie dead around her and then are you are you friends with the Lord of Blades Trevor? I've had rumors, many different uh, possible identities of the Lord of Blades. There is one who I seek that used to be a patron of House Caneth, son of the Patriarch actually. He is rumored to be one of the possible identities of the Lord of Blades. Aaron. That is Caneth. he. You embraced him. I've never met the man. No. I've heard stories told to me by the woman who created me. V. That is her. You were angry with her. I saw a woman you called V and you embraced the Lord of Blades. But I did not see much more than that. I, I don't know why. Surely, with what he has done, surely that future may not come to pass, but it's still odd, Does I guess. Like <laughs> well, if these are only possible futures, I've never met the Lord of Blades before. I do seek this Aaron de Canth. I've never met him before. These possible futures, have they ever not come true from your viewings of these in the past? You're right, you're right, I'm sorry. I, I, may, I may have made a mistake mentioning it. I'm sorry, Travago, I didn't mean to cause alarm. I appreciate the information, but uh, from my knowledge of the Lord of Blades, he seems to be manipulating the Warforge that follow him. That's I've, what it sounds like, yes. I seek to free the forged of manipulation from those around them. I, I don't see myself embracing the Lord of Blades if this turns out to be the case, but uh, from the sounds of it, many of the people have not shown their true colours. I guess time will tell. But these are all the reasons I seek the Lord of Blades and to free his army. Yes, well, uh, 
she sort of almost looks like she's wiping a tear, tear from her face. Are you all right? Yes. Um, I guess it, it was just seeing you all. Um, anyway. Uh, that was the bad, right? Not the bad and the good. I guess. Where's the good? I guess seeing the dragons alive and oh. victorious. I mean, yes, you're right. That's good. But more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, digest this and, and have a bit more of a walk before we come together. Um, and then, in all of your minds, you hear this, the distinctive voice of the silver dragon. I have thought on this and I would seek your help and your advice if we can meet out downstairs again in your home. Yes. Cool. Thank you. Should we go? Well, I do not intend on staying in your room uninvited. <laughs> Initially, I invited you here. <laughs> staying here would be awkward. That's. Uh, I'll make my leave. Yeah, if you could charge yourself <laughs> elsewhere, that would be good. <laughs> you charge away, I shall. <laughs> I'll be lying out that door. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna like stop and just go. then walk away. <laughs> hey, is anyone doing anything else apart from um, heading down? Um, before the moment um, he contacts us, I, in between that and talking to Thorum, I would like to do another scry this time. Um, I'm free, so. Okay, sure. Um, I still have his house key. Yes, you do. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, I also have his robe. Mm, you do. The eye robe, which I haven't identified either. Nope. Um, you have not. Can I actually, during that time... Yes, you can. ...have identified that as well? Absolutely. Um, All right. You don't have to give me the details of that now. Sure. Just uh, yeah, send it through to me. No worries. Um, but yes, I would like to describe on Carito. All right. As you close your eyes and hold his robe and his key, you reach out with your mind and attempt to locate him. But you do not. There is no location. pinpoint where he is in existence. Okay. Well, you only need to turn because you are, you did see the silver dragon glide down from um, or glide through actually the front the front flap of it of the tent that Regav's cell had gone back into. And he fly he floats into the room again through the front door and makes himself comfortable sort of on an edge edge of a table of the table as you all um, come down the stairs and come back from the forest. <coughs> Ah, uh, yes, you were wanting to know, just before you left, about these corpses. Uh, no, no. Yeah, you, you can fill that in later if yep. you want. Okay. The only couple things. Mm -hmm. um, did Thorman grab his gear before he left? Yes. Excellent. Um, secondly, <laughs> you bury it. Um, after the growth, was there anything that I would have been able to pick? from the enriching of the land that I would have known to, to take. Um, ingredients or... Help or anything. 
but having a quick look uh, just before I do, you do know that these peoples were mm. were from many places. You s you notice a couple of the without you know um, digging and and finding out by by looking at them, looking at the inscriptions on some of these headstones. Yeah, some of them do identify them as Syrians. Mm. Some of them as Brelish, others as. Uh, uh, Valerians, so Va Valinar, um, and just one from Zalago, a gnome that yeah. had become lost and starved. Um, in terms of herbs, you do come across um, some old carrot, which can be a component in some spells, um, a couple of feathers. Uh, some some twigs, some forked twigs that you know to be part of a locate object spell. Um, a couple of worms, uh, some dead, some living. Um, but that's it. Uh, yeah, that's it. Was you should eat the old carrot. <laughs> and some bark, some bark as well, sorry. I'll forage through what's available to take from the land itself. Yep. Um, pay respect to the the graves that are still left. Well, that are left. And, um, yeah, head back. Okay. How much does that cost? So we pay respect. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Time. <laughs> okay. Handfuls of gold that you sporadically throw out. <laughs> <laughs> and as you... You're the last to come in, and the Silver Dragon does wait for you. As you all take your seats, anyone standing, or you're all taking a, taking a chair? No, I'm going to stand. Mm -hmm. Not like this, like sure. comfortably. <laughs> yep. Yeah, just not standing. It's like up. leaning against a wall or something. Yeah. I say just... joins you on the other side of the table. <laughs> I've brought you all here... Um, because I feel there is another way. I do not want to put you in any more danger. I feel this is a choice you have to make. It's a choice I have to make. The choice I've made is to tell you a, a secret the draconic prophecies. The secret is when one wants to write their own futures, a dragon must be sacrificed. And then a set of words can be written with its blood into the script and change the course of what is to come. You must do this where the dragons sleep, their home. And you must do this with all of the draconic prophecies in your possession. Why are you telling us this? I see no reason if that secret is now released then doom is upon us and you have helped greatly and Bahamut has said Bahamut has said that I would be at peace with him. There is one more 
draconic prophecy that has been hidden. It was hidden by Malestra. She may not have known the reason why she was hiding it. She knew the power that it could bring for those who were able to find and figure the outcome and the means to do this. Deep within rock and mountain just beneath cliffside near where our destination lies is the home of aberrations a family that do not know that they have within their treasure hordes this script I feel the next step is to awaken my kin and with their help we can convince the rest of Corvair that Malestra is not to be trusted. With this and the rest of the draconic prophecies at your side we can then travel together and awaken my family and through this I can be the source of the final release of them Are you saying you want us to sacrifice you? It is the quickest way No. I won't do it. Awaken these dragons. Much more powerful, much more... with the means that I do not have. Voices you need. Power you need. Alliances. The proof Hamid. can you provide that this is so true? That what? That this course of action is the true way? Sacrifices? Again, I'm skeptical. Is this just not another ploy for some other dragon to take control over another situation? Do you and your kind truly seek the safety of Corbett? Or are we just letting someone else in to take power again? I do not. I am not angry at your suspicions, Ranger Rook. In fact, I am proud that you question it but you have been deceived so much it is right to have doubt I can only speak on behalf of my lord and show you the way he has offered You can do this a number of ways. You could collect this other parchment, take me away, make the future your own, make yourself king, make yourself lord of all the land by writing it once this enactment has been done. If that is the proof you wish to see, then so be it. There will be
will be consequences, of course. Nations would rise up against you. But I can see whether my Lord can speak to you directly. If that is what it would take to have you join us. Speak to me directly. And one of the others. Unless anyone yes, else put to all of us. Unless anyone else has doubt. I find it odd that sacrificing a young dragon as yourself would be the only way to awaken your kin. Surely this lord of yours, this Bahamut, would make less of a sacrifice of part of himself to achieve the same thing. I'm weary of these powerful beings that uh, hold sway over those that they consider below them. It seems like you're being pushed towards your choice. In fact, forged. I accept it with all my heart. The greater good is what drives Bahamut. They see for the majority, for the majority of these gods that are good. They need us to worship them. We need them to steer our path for the better, for our lives to be good, fulfilled. The power that these scripts hold simply requires this. There is benefit as well, however to seek out the Lord of Blades first and put an end to his armies unleashing Fraser Blue disguised as Tiamat for if you should go and un undo the magics of the slumber that the dragons have holding over them we are taking away time and Fazer Blue to potentially come into the world and even then there may be more destruction even if the dragons aided you so we can go that way if you would so wish instead and stop Fazer Blue before he's released and then the dragons could help with then undoing Malestra's chaos that is another way. Be at peace with whichever you choose. Hold the secret I have given you close. In the wrong hands, in Malestra's hands, there will be no more. We're going to leave it tonight, guys. She's like, have we all stayed silent waiting for you to say that? Awesome. Thank you very, very, very much. And thank you to resident uh, couch potato up there. Yeah, really. <laughs> he looks <laughs> so <laughs> cute. He saw cute. us all clapping <laughs> and he was like, what? <laughs> oh, look, you didn't have to take a picture of me. Oh, I see. We'll you're, one. you're not. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, and hopefully you enjoyed the ride. Yep. Um, have an amazing week. I can't believe that that went really, really quickly for me. That went so quickly. Every week, though, it goes so yep. quick. And then I'm like, oh, seven days. Yeah, another seven. To die. Have an amazing week, everybody. Um, catch us on Twitter. Um, catch us on Twitter. Yeah, catch us. Catch us. Catch us. Yes, exactly. 
Uh, yeah. If you liked what you heard, tell your friends about us so they can come in and have a look as well. Uh, we're just here to try and entertain you all because, you know, we're awesome and you're awesome as well. And you are. And you we're are. Anyway, so humble. I'm very well. tired as well. Sorry, we're humble. That's right. Um, have a great night. Cool. Uh, everybody. Have Thanks a so much for tuning in, guys. Take care. <laughs>